with the understanding of the enemy within of Pharaoh's nobility, creating all the wars and bloodsheds. There are two types of wars to be distinguished, the horizontal war and the vertical war. It says horizontal wars versus vertical wars. The horizontal war is a war between the various peoples or slaves of Pharaoh's nobility, or between the various races or religions. Examples are today's Ukraine war or today's Gaza war, and of course the two world wars. So here you see the Ukrainian flag, this is the Ukraine war, and it says horizontal war, which is people versus people, which is horizontally, same level. So here in the pictures, you see the masters here, and here the people, and it says here vertical war, which is people versus masters. And the vertical war is a war against our masters, like fighting up against the hierarchical ladder upwards or vertically. Examples are the people's revolutionary movements before they got infiltrated by the very ones the movement was actually fighting against if not even set up from the beginning as an internal war within the masters themselves of Pharaoh's nobility as in between the royalists and the republicans. Another example of a vertical war was the ransacking of Rome by the Vandals or the Dacia tribes decimating two Roman legions. So here you see Rome, and here you see the Vandals attacking Rome, which was a vertical war. Here you see the very brave Dacia people who decimated two Roman legions. You know, these people had nothing, you know, just almost in their underwear, you know, and trying to save their children and their women just as Pharaoh's nobility did with the Indians, with African slaves, the Jaywalker genocide, etc., etc. They did the same thing with the white tribes. We're all tribes, all the peoples of the world, we're all tribes. And we're facing this extremely organized and brutal enemy. And these days they were called the Romans, and of course the elite, giving all the orders and the officers, they were all of Pharaoh's nobility, just as today. And um, of course there are other examples. In Portugal there was the uh, very courageous Viriatu, and then the Romans, as usual, they started to kill the women and the children, and uh, so they he lost. In France, there was Vercingetorix, La Bella Golica. Uh, the uh, War of the Gauls was it's probably the biggest genocide the world has ever seen, and Caesar he murdered about everyone there. And this is how later on the uh, pharaoh's nobility, because these guys, the vandals, they were ransacking Rome. They couldn't stay there. And they said, well, let's go to France. We murdered everyone. And this is why French became the language of the nobility. You, know. you see, this is the white race. They also had to fight for their children, their women, fight for their lives. Courageous warriors, just like Indians. You know, they had nothing. It's a little little sword here, and then they, they had no, you know, they, they, it was impossible to win over these very organized and very brutal and lying enemy.
no chance at all. So a horizontal war is in between the peoples at the same level. And a vertical war is against the ones in power who rule the entire world now. So, in order to stop a horizontal war, it needs a vertical war. For instance, the only way to stop the Ukraine war would need both the Russian people and the Ukrainian people to neutralize the ones in power in one way or another. For the Russians to topple and set aside all the Russian politicians, all Russian generals, and the entire Ruski police and justice system. And for the Ukrainians to do the same with their politicians, generals, police, and justice system. So here you see the pharaohs with the same hammer as Zelensky. They're all pharaohs. So only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. The same for Philistines and jaywalkers. If the Philistines won't stop the ones in power themselves, who are the Hamas in this case, and if the jaywalkers will not topple their authorities themselves who betrayed the jaywalkers on October 7th through total absence and leaving the back door open deliberately, then the horizontal war will expand into a major chaos and bloodshed. So here it says, horizontal war will expand if we won't rise up into a vertical war and put up a resistance. So here in the next uh, collage, it says, uh, son of Hamas. So this is an S, an O, and an N in this sort of Arabic handwriting. And here it says Mossab Hassan Youssef. That's this guy here. And this is his father. So he's the son of his father, who was one of the founders of the Hamas. And he's very much against Hamas because he knows how cruel and uh, dishonest they are. So here it says M O S A B and the rest. And this is not his real name because the Hamas wants to kill him, and they would otherwise. So here you see in Philistine, a guy taking pictures, pictures of the Philistine children next to a missile with, with which they're going to kill innocent other children. And um, you see them smiling and... Um, the statistics say, you know, that um, seventy percent of the Philistines they support Hamas, but now they're sort of crying because it doesn't go all too well as they, as it was supposed to be, and um, there's only like two percent who are in, who are against Hamas, and the rest they have no. Uh, or they didn't express their opinion. So 70% they are, the Philistines, they are for Hamas. So the son of Hamas here. And in this respect, I have a lot of respect for this man called the son of Hamas, Mossab Hassan Youssef, who will understand my words that it needs a vertical war as the only solution to stop this madness of these endless horizontal wars where our masters of Pharaoh's nobility just play out their various slaves against each other as on a big 
chessboard with live players giving the ones with high killing scores a medal or two and a higher rank to order others to achieve higher kill scores. The masters know that in order to prevent a vertical war by the slaves, it needs perpetuous horizontal wars to keep them busy and to drain energy. So the accumulated potential for an uprising won't get too high. Of course, all the financing and organizing of this perpetuous state of horizontal wars is being done by the Swissies in their global base of Pharaoh in the Alps, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. So here you see the entire headshed of Hamas in Switzerland where they got financed and they got back a backgammon case with this thing in it. Here it says, burn Switzerland, February 2012 in Swiss Parliament. You see all the wood here. Here the Senator Geri Müller. There were many dangerous Nazis who were called Müller, by the way. Here, Mushir Almas Almasri. Very dangerous guy. He wants to kill all the jaywalkers, as he says. Sayed Abu Musame and Kamis Al Najjar. They were financed in Swiss Parliament and they got their morale pretty much boosted, you know, thinking that, you know, they got a lot of help from the Western world, as here in Switzerland, a lot of financing. Well, let's go and kill the jaywalkers. So this is what Swissy is doing. Eh? And then they say to us they are neutral and clean and innocent. They did the same thing with Hitler. You know, so the Nazis didn't attack Switzerland and neither were there any terrorist attacks ever in Switzerland. This is how they do it. You know, you must keep the base clean. Eh? Therefore, in all the movies to indoctrinate through entertainment, the masters leave their signature on each movie, while the slaves enjoy the entertainment with a beer and a snack or two. The masters have other plans, more subliminal. So here in this movie, the guy is being asked to whom, and he replies, the Secretary of Defense. So in this movie, titled On the Basis of Sex, at the very moment, the elite conspirators of our masters say the words, the Secretary of Defense, it immediately shows the big pharaonic obelisk of America. To emphasize for the insiders that the entire military apparatus is in the hands of Pharaoh, whereas Pharaoh's obelisk is a symbol of pharaonic domination. So after he said the Secretary of Defense, the next image you see in the movie is this with this obelisk and here are the same guys here the conspirators and here you see the title on the basis of sex no it's not what you think it is so for our masters when they say secretary of defense and even show the pentagon with it for them that is all connected with this thing here, which is entirely alien to our culture and comes from far away from another culture. For them, this pharaonic symbol of domination is related with the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon, with which, of course, they dominate us 
and other nations. These two images here with the obelisk here and here with the Pentagon and how do you call this river? The Potomac River, isn't it? They are from the same film. Right after you see the guy saying Secretary of Defense. And here it says vertical symbol for horizontal wars. And the message in the film is that the obelisk and Pharaoh's symbol of domination is related to war. And specifically, the horizontal war to dominate the peoples. Funny though, that this vertical symbol stands for horizontal wars. Sort of like a Christian cross, if you like, with a vertical and a horizontal component. And the cross derives also from the Middle East, just as the obelisk and Pharaoh's horizontal warfare. So here again is the title of the movie on the basis of sex. Um, by the way, in spite of the thought-provoking title and the huge phallus symbol, it is not a sex movie, but rather a political biography about the first American woman admitted to study law, only permitted for man in those days. Therefore, the title with the other word for gender in it. I guess the word sex goes better with the obelisk instead of the word gender for the twisted, perverted minds of our rulers and Hollywood. And there's even an obelisk in the background. Here, you can see it here. In Paris, Place de la Concorde, which I filmed for you a couple of years ago. So, Frenchy here, contrary to the image, is in fact working on the obelisk. At least, that's what he's supposed to do. So, how else than with a vertical war, this madness of the endless horizontal wars killing our dear ones can be stopped? It says, only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. Vertical, horizontal, soldier dying, humanity dying. Only a vertical war can stop the horizontal war. The movie on the basis of sex was not bad, actually. Moreover, as it was a true story, and for me, a lot of interesting subliminal messages, of course. And as said, this phenomenon is global and does not only concern Hollywood. In this fantastic Russian movie called Silver Skates, it shows at the end a huge obelisk when announcing the birth of the son of this aristocratic family and the countess having a son, where this lovely aristocratic family of Pharaoh's nobility goes ice skating next to the huge obelisk of their ancestors, as if to say, this is where we come from, and this is where we are today, and a happy end where Pharaoh lives forever and ever more. So this is, of course, an actual picture of the film Silver Skates. Here you see the skates. And you see the happy aristocratic family. Here is the countess. And here they got their newborn child. And it really gives a message. Usually it is at the end of the film, just as here. 
um, that's what I say. You know, it's um, Pharaoh's nobility. That's why they show it next to the obelisk. And they know it. They just give a message, you know, amongst each other. And at the same time, you know, this is subliminal messages for our children. And in this fantastic Russian children's movie for all ages and all its subliminal messages for the masters, their slaves, and their children, it even shows an entire Freemason setup of a Freemason lodge with the all seeing eye of Horus and the two Solomonic pillars, Yashin and Boaz of King Solomon, who was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. So he sees silver skates and the all seeing eye of Horus. He is the magician in blue for the war. It's a, it's a war against us and our children. Here is the uh, the seat of the uh, the master of the lodge. On the table, the, there's probably a, a death skull. And here are the two pillars, Yashin and Boaz, in a sort of a poisonous green color. Or maybe the green is snake green as pharaoh's cobra snake on his head the poisonous creatures that they are poisoning our children with lots of subliminal messages how else than with a vertical war to stop them while they are annihilating us through their horizontal wars and back to America again with the film Reminiscence, where it shows the occult temple somewhere in America, full of obelisks and sun hieroglyphs, which makes you wonder what they might be hiding inside. So here's the title, Reminiscence, with Hugh Jackman. You can see all the obelisks. And here are the sun hieroglyphs. And uh, it's an actual building uh, somewhere in America. <laughs> Why did they put all the obelisks in it? And also in this case, as in the Rusky film, the image was shown at the very end as a final signature under a letter or a message. And a message it is indeed, a subliminal one. And now a movie with subliminal messages for the jaywalkers, or jayrunners in this case, so they'll better understand the Gaza war and the terrible betrayal of their pharaonic government of the JJ base. Here in the film Operation Finale, as a reference to the final solution, Operation Finale, eh? final solution, about the capture of Adolf Eichmann, Adolf Eichmann in Argentina. As in every other movie, Pharaoh's nobility needs to show their symbol of the pharaonic domination transmitting the real makers of genocides and horizontal wars through pharaoh's symbol of domination in nearly every film as an identity stamp of the makers of movies wars and genocides so dear jaywalkers if you want to know who really are behind the final solution, Operation Finale, here it says Operation Finale, together with Pharaoh's obelisk. Can't you see that they are laughing straight in your faces? I've been telling you all along for so many years 
how Pharaoh's nobility are the brains behind it all. And here you can witness that once more in the sublimi subliminal images and the subliminal words of the title. They even show the obelisk of Buenos Aires in Argentina, the land where all the Nazis went to after the war, including Adolf Hitler himself. Nazi Templars of Pharaoh all over, straight in your face. Argentina, Pharaoh's obelisk, an operation finale for final solution. Open up your eyes and see through the magic veil. So here on the cover, Operation Finale, standing for final solution with the obelisk. So they are the ones behind the final solution. And it shows Argentina where they all went to. And here too, in the middle of the film, it shows the pharaonic symbol of domination in a film about catching a Nazi in Argentina. So why do they have to show this obelisk again? I so this statue here actually stands in the JJ Bays. Here it says Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany on his horse and the Zionist leader Theodor Herzl. And they met actually in the JJ Bays. In 1898 and 20 years before the Belfort Declaration, Theodor Herzl met the German Emperor Wilhelm II three times, where Herzl asked the masters of Pharaoh's nobility, including the Sultan of Turkey, if the Jay Walker slaves, please, could come back home and the answer was negative because the sultan didn't want them back in his caliphate in which jerusalem laid in 1898 and the german emperor didn't want them in his german empire anymore either so here it says zionist leader theodor herzl and here, Emperor Wilhelm II, or William II of Germany, who didn't want the jaywalkers in his empire anymore. So here you can read about it. Wilhelm II's voyage to the Levant in 1898. And you can read it yourself here. So this is what you saw at the statue. It says here a photo montage of Herzl's brief meeting with the Kaiser, but this really happened like this. By the way, Herzl, it means little heart. And, uh, well, he had a heart for the JJ base, apparently. Maybe he had a big heart, but he was a Freemason, you know. As I've already shown you, there's a, there's a Freemason lodge called Theodor Herzl in the JJ base. And the Freemason lodge would not give the name of their lodges, of any of their lodges, to a non-Freemason. So Theodor Herzl was a Freemason, and most likely a member of Pharaoh's nobility, of the Jaywalker nobility, which also exists and who are not really friends with the jaywalker slaves. It needs a vertical resistance, folks, and I would like the jaywalkers to rise up together with the Germanic tribes, because we all have the same enemy, and we've all been duped. Dear slaves of this prison planet, Please stop the horizontal wars and initiate the vertical one. There is no other solution to obtain world peace. And then there's this funny thing with the number 101, 101, 
which I see everywhere. And it's very much connected to the horizontal and vertical wars and to murder, torture and genocide of and by our masters. There was the 101 or 101st Hamburg Police Battalion of the Nazis who were part of the SS Einsatzgruppen genociding jaywalkers and Poles during World War II, murdering at least 100,000 men, women and children. So you see their faces, they're celebrating. Here you got Adolf on the wall. Better to put them against the wall, eh? So it says Police Battalion 101 of the SS Einsatzgruppen. I see this number everywhere. And it's not really nice. So here you can read about the Reserve Police Battalion from Hamburg 101. Yeah, the murder of Jay Walker's commanders Wilhelm Trapp. Well, you remember, you know, the family Trapp in that nice video the um, about the Alps and going to Switzerland. Remember? Well, here he is, the Trapp family. Uh, I forgot the name of the video. And uh, now you can read about it. The 101 operations in Bessarabia. Remember Bessarabia? That's where the Swissies are in Ukraine, eh? It's called Bessarabia. And uh, well, you read it yourself. And there's something about this number, and I'm going to tell you where it's from. So here you can talk, see about their actions. Well, the total they murdered from 42 to 43, the 101 battalion, almost 100,000 people, and probably 100,000 people. They were in death camps, Majdanek, Treblinka. Uh, the number 101 is, you know, it's, it's referring to death, murder, genocide, torture and whatever, and I'm going to explain you, it's coming from Faro. Yeah, they are from Hamburg district, the, uh, the 101. So, the 101 battalion, and I can see it everywhere in history. I, I see it popping up everywhere. So you keep your eyes open. There is a room 101 in the George Orwell book, 1984, where people get tortured and interrogated. Here it says the V for victory here, the Templar V, room 101. And here you see room 101 with all the inmates having passed here. And here from the George Orwell, it says, You asked me once, said O'Brien, what was in room 101. I told you that you knew the answer already. Everyone knows it. The thing that is in room 101 is the worst thing in the world, George Orwell. There you can see room 101. And me, homie Ross, I was in room 101, where the Swissies heavily tortured me through oxygen deprivation, and where in 2015, I lost more than 30 kilos in three and a half months in room 101. You can't believe what they do to you in room 101 and how it destroys you. The Swissy Nazi Templars kept me in a 101 isolation chamber for one entire year. Of the entire five and a half years total in a high security facility for political prisoners. Room 101 is now being repeated 
in the Netflix series Travellers, where they also have a room 101 for torturous purposes. There is the 101st Airborne Division, the 101, who are also a bunch of killers for the horizontal wars, just following orders without thinking. So here it says, 101st Airborne Division, United States Army, the Screaming Eagles since 1918, Airborne. And here, 101st Airborne Division. There is the film 101 Dalmatians, the 101 Dalmatians, about the nobility and the evil Cruella de Vil, just as the Countess de Vil, who got married with the Raven of Zurich. So here's the Raven of Zurich. You, I'll, I'll show that in my video, the Raven of Zurich. And he got married with the Countess de Ville, d'Amblin de Ville, like this one here. And here you see the number 101 again, and it's connected with the nobility. And you have to hear the black and white here, like in the Freemason large checkerboard configuration, the black and white. De Ville, it's, it's all here, and the 101 again. It's all the time, 101. So, what's wrong? with that 101 number, which is so much related with death, evil, torture, and genocide. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's Pharaoh's son, hieroglyph, with the sun in the middle and the two bars on each side, which I've shown you 13 years ago in my film, The Pharaoh Show, and many other videos on my channel, Gatsafrats. The masters used the sun hieroglyph as a secret symbol on houses to announce their presence to each other. For all houses with the sun hieroglyph on it have a room 101 and are 101 houses. So this, if you have a dot here in the middle, it's the official um, um, hieroglyph of uh, the pharaohs. And these bars, you know, if you put them right, you get a one. And for them, it doesn't matter if they're like horizontal or vertical. This is the 101. And they do it a lot. Uh, having this vertical, so which I also filmed you. This symbol can either be, the sun hieroglyph can either be vertically or horizontally. And I've shown you many examples. I'll show you some more examples here in this video, uh, which I found in my older videos. And I have to tell you, my channel Gatsafrats, you better take all the videos and download them because they take, they're going to take that off uh, very soon now. And in 101 are also the two columns, Yashin and Boaz, and maybe even the binary system of ones and zeros, through which their total control system with digital binary systems becomes a reality with lots of 101 torture chambers and 101 genocides. So this uh, screenshot is also from one of my videos on my channel, Gatsafrats. All the uh, sun hieroglyph pictures I'm going to show you, they're all from my channel, Gatsafrats. So you better download all the videos. It's going to disappear within a few weeks now. I filmed this on the motorway on a petrol station with a lot of pillars. So this is really the 101. Here's the 1, the O, the, the, the sun hieroglyph in the middle, and another 1. So you can make it like horizontally, and then here the sun, as i just shown you before. And they also have it vertically, in many ways actually. Even here's another triangle. 
and it uh, you know so it is uh, there's the concept of three and four in it you know and here's a square in it uh, it's all there you know so this is what they mean with the 101 it's a sun hieroglyph and um, the pillars yashin and boaz so here you can see it vertically like 101 here 101 and uh, i filmed this in strasbourg on a very dark and sinister house in strasbourg france it's on my channel Gatsefrat. this is a 101 house and they got the m from mason here here's a shell here the handshake of the uh of the freemasons well, with a lot of weird stuff hanging down even here in the window there's the uh there's the 101 with a cup you know the grail it's probably a, a freemason lodge and anyway the pillars yachin and boas like yachin and boas um has nothing to do really with the jaywalkers it is uh, the jaywalker nobility it's um it, it was in the temple of king solomon who was married with the daughter of pharaoh so yachin and boaz is definitely pharaonic and um so yeah there's something odd indeed about the 101 code and most definitely related with their vertical and horizontal wars. The masters use the horizontal wars for their downward vertical war to eradicate us. This sun hieroglyph here, and, and again in another way, but it's definitely the 101, I filmed at the I call it the George Bush Castle, the ancestors of Laura Bush, and the Bush family comes there of the extremely powerful dynasty of the Swiss von Grafenried, who helped founding the uh, America. Here you can see the red and white stripes of America even. And so we need a vertical upwards rule to pull them down off their high pedestals proclaiming their lies to us so the slaves will stop fighting each other in endless horizontal wars and genocides so here you can see the sun hieroglyph here in the middle is the it's also the compass of course and for the o and here the one and the one lying down and so i filmed it in wood on a door on a farmhouse uh, down at where the C George Bush Castle uh, is in Switzerland, next to um, it's in the canton of Bern, and uh, it probably also belongs uh, to them. Like the sun, uh, the sun hieroglyph, the one hundred one, room one hundred one, which they usually have in castles, eh? the torture chamber, the dungeon. Bring down. The 101, I tell you, and use the vertical upward movement. There's no other way. If you don't want to end up in room 101, I was in room 101 in an isolation cell without sufficient oxygen in a Swissy detention center for political prisoners and i tell you you don't want to be there in room 101 also neo of the matrix movies was in room 101 yes i read all your comments and the valuable information in your feedback thank you belsey for your important comments also the french peugeot have a 101 moped from the 60s so you can find your way quicker to room 101 or maybe the 101 getaway bike 
to escape from room 101. So here it says the 101 Peugeot, you know, the 101 Peugeot is from the 60s. See, life was different then, eh? Much nicer, much friendlier. In Switzerland, many political prisoners got suicided and murdered in the Swiss Room 101 and tortured through code O2T oxygen deprivation, as the Swissies did to me. And to the Austrian whistleblower Wolfgang Umfogel, who got murdered in 2010 by the Swissies in their room 101 because he sold information on Swiss tax evasion. And if you criticize the Swiss banks, which I did as well, you're dead. They'll kill you. So here's the Kronenzeitung Wolfgang Umfogel, was his name, October 2010. So here's the whistleblower. If I wouldn't be on the road, I, I could have shown you a better picture, you know, in color and everything. So also my name was in it, as you can read here, Sean Ross, the historian. And so when the Swissies, they read this, my name, they send me an anti-terrorist squad, the Ancian from Bern, to intimidate me like a mafia and to frighten me. Like, which of course did not happen. They didn't frighten me, I mean. And they took over my words. Der Mann wurde gesellschmordet. The man got suicided. And the O2T torture method, folter, that means torture. And uh, so this destroyed the life. This article destroyed the life of me and my family and my children. We got all terrorized. And uh, now I, I couldn't be with my family for the last eight years. I haven't been in Swaziland. So they murdered the, um, the whistleblower from Austria because of uh, tax evasion. And they put them in room 101. Here's a list of prisoners getting murdered in room 101 in Swiss torture detention centers for political prisoners. Unfortunately, the list is only going back to 2018, which is only like five years. So here is the JVA. Justizvollzugsanstalt, it means a prison, in Landsburg, AG, that is Argo, which is a canton in Switzerland. And here's the date, that was uh, December 21st, uh, winter solstice, eh, when they do a lot of um, satanic rituals. This year, 2023, it's a suicide, suicid. And I don't know what this means here. Okay. The next one, before that, that was in September 2023. The prison of Zolotun. Here is the, every time, here's the canton, Zolotun. Suicide. A natural death. Okay, you're in prison. So this is in June 25th, 2023, in the canton of Zug. Okay, you died just naturally in prison. Okay, sure, yeah. Here they don't even say how the person died. Also in June, in the prison in Biel, a town, in the canton of Bern, that's B-E. And here another one in Biel, uh, a, a week before, or two weeks before, they don't say why he died, you know. So it's mostly suicide, I suppose. So I'll let you look at it yourself, eh? And I also was in this prison here, Torbeck, which is in a prison. He died of a medical problem. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, he probably got suicided and took an overdose on pills, and then it's a medical problem, you know. Uh, there's a foreigner, not even a criminal, you know, uh, in Geneva. G-E is Geneva, suicide. And this one here is in Zurich. It says unbekannt. It says we don't know. Uh, we don't. They don't know why he died, or 
They don't, they don't want to give any information. I was also in this prison here, a horrible place. That was uh, December 2022. Let's see if there's another solstice. No, there wasn't. You'll probably see more. And um, there's also in the canton of Bern a suicide. This one, er hanged, means uh, hanged himself or herself. In Fribourg, the canton, FR. So here you see all the dates, eh? And here you see what prison and the way of death. And um, so this one, BL is Basel land. It's Basel. There's also BS. No, it's not what you mean, but that means Basel Stadt, the town of Basel. Uh, Swiss, I was also in a prison in BS, in the town of Basel. They put me everywhere, and I'm not even a criminal. What a, what a shame this, you know. A suicide and a suicide, a natural death, another natural death. Zurich here, this is SG, is Sankt Gallen, where the first, where the, the grandfather of eugenicism came from, Ernst Rudin. Uh, not some more suicide here, prison in, in Zurich, Gefängnis, it means prison. Baseland, Freiburg, suicide, suicide, unbekannt, I don't know. VS is Valleys, where they have the uh, where where they where most of the Swiss Guard are coming from, because it's Catholic mostly. And uh, so here again, Zurich, Witzwil, they put me here as well. Witzwil was a for forced labor. I had to I had to do forced labor, and then I escaped, uh, and I was away for I walked for days. And I was away for two years, but of course I wanted to see my children and they got me again. I was away in France for two years. They put me everywhere. So I escaped from this prison. I, I did everything and I'm not a criminal, you know. This country is a shame. It's, it's a complete shame. It's, it's based upon, upon lie after lie after lie. This is the canton of Vaud, where... Um, the guy from Genesis is living. Uh, Peter, no, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. So here, suicide, suicide. It's the French-speaking part. Also, a lot of suicide. This is a very horrible one. Push Vs. A lot of psychiatric uh, cases. I wasn't there, thank God. Uh, here, hanged. It's almost the same word, you know, hanged. If you leave away the er. It says hanged. The A umlaut, it's like an E. It's hanged. Uh, this is in Bern, St. Gallen, St. Gallen. Angezündet. It means he made a fire. Terrible, terrible, terrible. What a country. What a terrible place. Oh, so we are in 2021. Let's see if there was a winter now. Yeah, almost. Well, you know, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, okay, here's a winter solstice. The twenty second is part of the um of the realm of the of the twenty first winter solstice. Of course. And here the police murdered him. Polizeihaft. Probably another foreigner, you know. This is how they do it. They hide everything, that country. Um etc. I'll let you read it yourself. Otherwise it takes too long, right? Eh? Yeah, another solstice in 2019 in the realm. They don't say how he died. Winter solstice, a lot of people die under various well, under very strange circumstances. This one was in a psychiatrical prison, hanged. Oh man, this is horrible! Sprung aus Fenster. He jumped out of a uh, out of a window. A Verwahrung. It means you did something for which you got like five years, and they can keep you away forever. They tried to do this with me, you know, to keep me away forever for, for bloody nothing, for bloody nothing. 
Now, intoxication. Well, they probably drugged him with something, eh? Mm -hmm. All this is hanged, hanged, hanged. The Varkhof. I was in this one as well, in BS, Baselstadt. In this one, I was also in another one, Schelle Medley. They put me everywhere. Yeah, sprung aus Fenster, jump out of a window. So, and it only goes to like uh, 2017. So the beginning of 2018. Another one hanged here. So that's only five years. And I've been away from Switzerland over all these times from 2015. So, you know, they're asking cookies everywhere. So I stopped looking in the newspapers. And um, yeah, this is uh, room 101 in Switzerland. Murder Incorporated by the Swissies and their Nazi Templars. When I was still in Switzerland before 2015, I used to document all the suicide cases in Swiss prisons I could find in the media. And then my entire channel got taken off. And I stopped collecting the Room 101 evidence of actual cases in Switzerland. I remember that about every three days there was a Room 101 case of a prison inmate being tortured and suicided in the Swiss newspapers. Most of the prisoners in Switzerland are foreigners who are innocently in prison because the Swissies just lie something together to eliminate someone not Swiss. From the master's base of Pharaoh in the Alps back to the master's pharaonic symbols in the movies as pharaonic obelisks without end in the 2019 thriller Angel Has Fallen which you can see here. So you think they're not pharaohs and yet showing all those obelisks everywhere. Here you can see the title, Angel Has Fallen. So for those who are believers, they probably know what that means. This is the symbol of the pharaonic domination here too. You're gonna, they even take pictures like this. Here's the obelisk and here the White House here too. And the White House in Demotic Pharaonic is the Per Het. Per, it means the house, and Het, it means white, which is Upper Egypt in the south. There were two Egypts. And the White House, the Per Het, is the New World Order, whereas the Red House is the Old World Order, which is called the Per Tazer. And it's not a house to live in, like here? No. It's an aristocratic pharaonic house, a royal house. So in all these movies, they show it all the time and everywhere, in towns, in capitals, in streets. So you still believe we're not being ruled by them from Egypt, these pharaohs? Come on, wakey, wakey, open up your eyes. And here in the movie G.I. Joe Retaliation from 2013, full of images of their great American obelisk under different angles. At a certain moment, our masters, the ones in power, show a huge octagon where they're all standing on, as to say, the ground where we stand on belongs to the octagon and gets protected by the octagon. So here's the octagon and the ground is in the US, which belongs to them. And here in connection, here you see the obelisk, and here the White House. So the octagon in the White House, in connection with the octagon, as to say the White House and the ob obelisk is under control of the octagon. Don't you think that these creatures 
shall all the beloved pharaonic symbols from Egypt without any reason. I've been telling you all these years that the octagon rules over America. I even made videos, octagon rules over pentagon. You see it here, they even show it, you know, they rub it right into your faces. And I've been publishing this the first time already 13 years ago. This year, in October 2023, some religious and very friendly jaywalkers with those curly sideburns took me hitchhiking in France as they just came back from the Ukraine by car where they celebrated Rabbi Nachman. They fed me, invited me for a coffee and gave me a booklet called Tikkun Haklali in Hebrew with a French translation and uh, what I read. So here it says Tikkun Haklali and here it says Rabbi Nachman who is like a jaywalker saint. But I always look at the symbols. I read the whole book by the way. Um, it interested me and out of respect because these guys were really nice, you know. I don't think, well, I'm sure they don't know what's going on. You know, they just follow Pharaoh's religion and um, very dogmatically. And they don't see these sort of things. So here's a square. Why is there a square? You know, and here is a circle. Why did they put the letters in a circle? I mean, it's much easier to read like this, isn't it? You have to turn your head around like this, you know, to read it. So with a compass, you can make a circle. So for the initiated ones, it says square and compass. So that means this whole religion is in the hands of pharaohs and the Freemasons. And the adepts, you know, they don't even know what's going on. They think they're doing a good thing. Um, believing in, in 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 the Creator and all this, but they don't. It's all in the hands of Freemasonry. Look at the symbols; they don't lie, you know. And again, these guys—they were they were nice guys, you know. They were friendly with me, no harm, you know. No, there was nothing wrong with these guys. And it's the same with all these religions, you know. They all think they're doing something good, you know. Uh, but really, we're being lied to by Pharaoh, you know. Here it says, Tikkun Haklali. And I'll show you some more people. And here it says in French, Souviens-toi, Seigneur, pour la perte de fils des dômes du jour fatal de Jérusalem, où il disait, démolissez, la démolissez, la jusqu'en ses fondements. So, uh, it says, uh, Remember, O oh Lord, um, the, uh, the loss of the sons of Edom, Edom, and of the the, uh, the 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 day of Jerusalem, where they said destroy it, destroy it, all the way down to the um, completely. So the uh, the sons of Edom they asked the Lord to destroy Jerusalem, apparently, which is interesting. You know, I mean, it's historically seen. I only see it historically, and I look at the facts. These are the facts, the symbols of these creatures. And I don't mean the jaywalkers, the people, but the pharaohs, you know, these creatures. They leave their symbols like everywhere. And don't you think these religious adepts that they knew uh, this and what's really going on? They have no idea. And to my surprise, the jaywalker booklet had the fleur de lis on it the royal symbol of Pharaoh's nobility in France. I suppose because their Messiah, called the Moshiach ben David, just as Jesus, is from the royal house of King David, thus proving again that all religion comes out of Pharaoh's nobility with their fleur de lis showing the concept of three, which is them, our masters. So here 
It says again, Tikkun Haklali, la réparation universelle, traduction et phonétique. Uh, in French, you know, here it's like in Hebrew, yeah, Tikkun Haklali, and here it is in French. And here we see the fleur de lis. Now, what is the symbol of the, the French royal pharaoh's nobility? You know, the symbol of the French king, not even the jaywalker king, you know, but that's where they all come from. They all come out of pharaoh. Why is this doing on their book, you know? And this guy, the uh, Rabbi Nachman, uh, he, he probably never even seen France. He's from Ukraine, or he was from the Ukraine. So here's this text in uh, in Hebrew. Well, I don't speak that, so I'm not going to read it for you. The one about the Edom guys, it even says Edom, uh, who wanted to have this Jerusalem destroyed. And um, yeah, so we saw the square and compass. Fleur de Lis, so at the front side there's a Fleur de Lis, at the back side of the book there was the square and compass, so it's all the same, you know, in all religions, and they all come out of the house of David, it's King David, it's not J. Walker David, for God's sake, it's King David, and he was a bad person, you know, remember the story of Bathsheba, you know, he really liked that woman, so... But she was married, so he sent um, her man, who was an officer in his army of King David, uh, at at uh, at the um, at the front. So he died. So he could, um, you know, do whatever he wanted with her, which he did. You know, and he already had about thousand concubines. You know, King David, and the son of King David is King Solomon, who was married with the daughter of Pharaoh uh, and a lot of others, probably as well. Who made the um, the Temple of Solomon, you know, and the Seal of Solomon, you know, the um, this thing, like you know, what the Jaywalkers have in the uh, on their JJ Bay's flag, you know, an up an upwards triangle and a downwards triangle, you know, together, you know, what I mean, I probably it's the Seal of Solomon, you know, and the Yachin and Boas, they are in the Temple of Solomon, you know. So people, all the slaves of the world, please wake up, you know? We're being lied. Religion is a lie. You know, the politics is a lie. History is a lie. And I, look at the proofs, you know? Fleur de Lis, you know? And the square and compass. You can't miss this, eh? So all you religious freaks, get your heads out of the sand, you know, and, and look around, you know? If there is a God, he gave, you, he gave you eyes and a brain to think with, you know? This will, this, only this will save you, you know? No, nothing else will save you. And especially not some entity in the air, you know, an invisible entity. Uh, this is what the jaywalkers do all the time, you know? They, um, they don't defend themselves. They're hoping the, uh, these ones here, probably, and the other ones on the other side with the square and compass, and, and and the invisible thing in the in the sky will help them. Then they don't defend themselves and they run away. And if they can't run away, they get caught and they get all murdered and genocided. And they blame anyone, everybody else for not helping them. You know, it's a reality. You know, I mean, help yourself. You know, why don't you help yourself? You can't blame anyone else, everybody else for that not helping you. You know, in a war, everybody is afraid, you know, of, of the enemy and of the Nazis. Everybody, all Europeans were afraid. Even the Germans were. Oh, boy, look at the signs. Please, open your eyes, everyone. And again, these Orthodox jaywalker guys, you know, they were nice guys, really. And they didn't have a clue what's really going on, you know. They're all in this dogmatic religion and everything. Just as all the religions, uh, I mean, they were helpful to me. They fed me. They were brotherly. I'm not a jaywalker. Uh, they, I, I just told them shalom, you know, opened the door, you know, and, and we had a nice conversation. And they were poor guys. You know, I could see that they had an old shabby car, you know, and, and shabby clothes and, 
they were poor guys because they don't work, you know. It's it's the women work, you know, these orthodox ones. So it's it's all a myth, you know, about the the, the rich jaywalkers and all that, you know. They were poor guys. The the car was almost falling apart, and already four guys in it. They were tired, all the way from the Ukraine, and they and they took me, you know, with my two huge backpacks, you know. I had to squeeze the jaywalkers, you know, to the uh, to the side of the car almost, you know. Uh, it's sad, you know, that the slaves we don't understand what's going on, or you know. And again, the square and compass. I mean, the symbols don't lie, and it says here Male Vegadish Foundation printing and distribution of the books of Rabbi. Nachman. I suppose the rabbi Nachman was probably a good guy, but these ones here, Mala Vigadish, no, 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 they absolutely know what's going on. They're indoctrinating the slaves. Uh, maybe also this rabbi Nachman, he, um, he belonged to them, you know, the pharaohs telling them, you know, all these things. Well, the Germans, you know, the Nazis are not that bad, and the Germans are philosoph philosophical people, don't defend yourselves, you know, and all this. That, that's what the rabbis did, you know. And then there were the uh, the Bielski brothers, you know, and they said, no way, I'm, we're going to defend ourselves. And this is what I like, you know. These are the, the Bielski brothers. They are real jaywalkers, you know. Defend yourself, you know. Because everything is indoctrinated, everything is infiltrated by these ones. The religion, the politics, the history, everything. You can see it here. And again, this is the base of a pyramid. There are four corners. It's a concept of four. And at the base are the slaves. You know? they, they are the lowest plays in a pyramid and then the hierarchy is up in the pyramid you know and the the, the um the compass and the, the the side of a pyramid is the concept of three there are three corners in it and uh, the uh, compass is about uh, 60 degrees in the in the in the, uh, the logo the square and compass and with 60 degrees you can make a, um, a a triangle with three sixty degrees corners. So with the compass, you can make this, and this stands for the triangle and the compass and the, the concept of three, which is the hierarchy, which is them, our masters. And you can see here the concept of three and the masters. They're surrounding the slaves all around. You know, there's nowhere to go. You know, it's all dense. You know, see what you see what I mean. Of course, the Freemason Lodge in this beautiful Russian movie, Silver Skates, is also a 101 with Solomon's pillars for the one and the round eye of Horus for the O, 101. So here the, the movie Silver Skates, as I told you before, the all-seeing eye of Horus, it's round, it stands for the O, and the one, it stands for a pillar. And here the other one, the pillar. So in this symbol, it says 101. And with this here, we can see that the number 101, it's out of the, it's out of Pharaoh's nobility, the masters, because it's the same. And here we know this is Pharaonic. And this is also because Solomon Solomon's pillars, the Yachin and Boaz, he was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. They're all, they're all pharaohs. The whole pharaoh's nobility, huh, they are pharaohs. So here, this is very important because here you can see the connection between 101 and the movies and our masters, the pharaohs. All these movies are by the pharaohs. I mean, why else do they show the 101, and, and which is exactly the same as what we see here? You see, and here we see the colors again, blue and red. Uh, they are the, the pharaonic colors. 
uh, two of the three pharaonic colors, blue for the war, and red is the red house of Pharaoh, which is the old world order, the Pertasser. And the old world order uh, are the, the, the true it's, uh, uh, pharaohs of the nobility. And this video is about pharaoh's nobility. And that's why the color red with the color blue for the war. And here, the original Guido von Liszt swastika, with the concept of three and four, making it a pyramid, as I showed you in my video. The video in which I show how the pyramid becomes a Templar's cross and then a swastika can be seen here in this channel under the title From Pyramid to Templar's Cross to Swastika. And von Liszt is an aristocratic name, just as his pal Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels, who was a Cistercian monk and founded the organization of the new Templars. The Cistercian order are the predecessors of the Knights Templars and the only monastic order who could carry a sword legally by a papal law. And their cloaks are white, like the Knights Templars. It just needs a red cross on the Cistercian cloak, which is done easily and pretty quickly. So Hitler was in his youth devoted to the works of Guido von Liszt and Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels and their new Templar order. The Nazi Templars, as I've already told you. So here it says Guido von Liszt, das Geheimnis der Rune, the secret of the runes. And here you can see this, it's a square. And in the square, the, for the concept of four, there are three triangles for the concept of three. So it says square and compass. And I show it like this in that video I just told you about. How it becomes finally, the pyramid becomes a Templar's cross. Because if you make the line here, you know, you get a Templar's cross. You see, like this. And then it becomes a swastika just like this. And also Hermann Göring, he found it on the Swedish castle um, of his wife, uh, Karen, who was a Swedish aristocrat. They had the symbol on the castle, I think where the, um, where the fire, fireplace uh, is, exactly this way the swastika is being uh, des um, designed, like this here. And then the Nazis, they made it a little bit like this, a little bit different. But this is the original swastika. So here it definitely also says square and compass. Here is the square for the compass concept of four. And the concept of three is here, standing for the compass. So all the initiated ones, it, they read square and compass, and it all comes out of a pyramid. And there were extremely many Freemasons within the Nazi party, within the Nazis, like Hitler's banker, for example, Yalma Schacht, who founded uh, with some others the Bank of International Settlements, etc., etc. It's all related. If you look at the SS symbol, you know, the, the skull and bones, and the, um, it's, it's total Freemasonry. Nazism is total Freemasonry. Well, here you see the square and compass when they use the skull and bones, like the 322 skull and bones uh, Freemason Lodge in America. And here are the Nazis, the Totenkopfverbände, also skull and bones. So this is nothing new. I've been telling you this for 13 years on YouTube. And this here actually is the uh, the winged sun disc of Horus. This is the sun, and these are the wings of Horus, the falcon. It's not an eagle, it's a falcon. And the pharaohs, they have exactly the same symbol all over. 
It's the winged sun disk of Horus. Okay, uh, Ma'at, Isis, they also have wings, but not with the sun, the sun disk. And uh, well, and here's the swastika, which comes out of a pyramid. So it's all here. It's entirely pharaonic, the whole thing. So this here, Nazis, is the same as Freemasons. And um, the Nazi Templars, and all comes out of Pharaoh. So this symbol here is called the winged sun disk of Horus. And there's also the 101 in it. You've got one bar here, a one bar here, and here's the sun, which I've shown you in all my videos, showing you on the front of the houses, the sun hieroglyph. It's also this thing, actually. This is also 101. 101 is the, um, is the symbol in ciphers. And this one here is exactly the same as this. It represents the same thing. Also, Freemasonry comes out of Pharaoh, as I've already explained to you. Nazis, they come out of Pharaoh, the Nazi Templars, the Templars are of the nobility, and the nobility comes out of Pharaoh. So, Nazis, it's the same thing as the Horus, the winged sun disk of Horus. So here is about the winged sun, like this here, like the Nazis. And uh, it's in an ancient Egyptian text, uh, the horrors of Edfu. And uh, you, you find this symbol in all cultures back. Oh, here it is again, the winged sun, the winged sun disk of Horus. You find it here. Look, here it is, like the Nazis, the round thing where the, they have the swastika in the middle that comes out of Egypt, two times the all-seeing eye, the concept of three. This hieroglyph actually is the hieroglyph for the sun, like this here. Um, in all ancient cultures here in the hieroglyphs in Egypt, like the Nazis, same thing, people. And here with the two Uraeus snakes, the Egyptian cobra, it's also the winged sun disk, in a way. Oh, the wings are here. The winged sun disk. And here as well, Nazis everywhere. Eh? And here, uh, this is uh, Mesopotamia. And as I've been telling you, this Mesopotamia is not older than Egypt. I mean, here's another proof. Here are the feathers. The whole picture is not on it. It's, uh, it's a falcon. This is Horus. This is the winged sun disk of Horus in Mesopotamia. So Mesopotamia is not older than Egypt. Otherwise, our masters would be showing Mesopotamia all the time. You know, but they're not. They're showing Egypt. That's where it all comes from. Here too. It's even got a Templar's cross in the middle. Well, what do you, that? What do you know, eh? Uh, and here as well. So this is the winged sun disk of Horus in Mesopotamia, Babylonia, Babylon, which is all out of Egypt. Right? Mesopotamia is not older. So this Anunnaki... Sumerian stuff out of Mesopotamia, it's not older than Egypt because this is the winged sun disk of Horus. This is probably Horus and it's a falcon. Here are the feathers, two hands here. I don't know what that means. And the Anunnaki here, the Sumerian stuff. It's the winged sun disk, like the Nazis. And here again. So the Anunnaki stuff, it's all out of Egypt. It's the beginning of everything, where the whole civilization and the uh, where these creatures come from. <laughs> and we are their slaves, like in the Anunnaki stories. 
the winged sun disk of Horus. And Horus is like Horus. Horus, Horus. This here is a very ancient pharaonic text which was translated in Edfu out of the um, uh, hieroglyphs uh, about which I'm going to tell you about the next time in relation to another Hollywood film. And this is very important, but it will take too long in this video now. So I want to show you about this here. I'll get you here. You can see the winged sun disk of uh, Horus. I'll give you a better picture. So here you can see the winged sun disk with the Urei serpents, the winged disk. And it says Pharaoh was identified with Horus since the beginning of history. Horakti, Horus of the horizon, the morning sun. The combination of uh, Ra and Horakti, which was the main god of Heliopolis in historic times. So that's Alexandria, Heliop Hel Heliopolis. And the Horus of Edfu came to be identified with Re Horakti. Only a pair of falcon wings. So you see the Nazis, you know. You can't understand the Nazis without understanding Egypt and going back like 4,000 years in history. You can't understand the Freemasons either if you don't understand this here. And only a pair of falcon wings were a symbol for the heaven. Under the fifth dynasty, a sun disk was inserted between the wings called Beheti, he of the colorful feathers, and the symbol was identified with Horus. So the Nazis are basically Horus, <laughs> if you like, you know, like Ross, the Nazi hunter. And um, so they are, just as the Romans, these uh, wings, they are not the wings of an eagle. It's not the Roman eagle. It's the Roman falcon. It's the Nazi falcon. Eagle has nothing to do with it. It's all Horus. And uh, it's the winged sun disk of Horakti of uh, Horus. So here you see the Netflix film El Dorado, Everything the Nazis Hate. And here the German Wimbledon tennis star, the Baron uh, Gottfried von Kram, living in a castle together with Hitler. And I guess here Ernst Röhm about whom I will tell you more in a minute. So here you can read about Gottfried von Kram, Gottfried Alexander Maximilian Walter Kurt Freiherr von Kram, was a German tennis player who won the French, French championships twice and uh, reached the final of a Grand Slam single, etc. And also the final at Wimbledon. And at the yeah, birth and childhood. He was the third of the seven sons of Baron Burkhard von Kram by his marriage to Countess Jutta von Steinberg. Kram was born at the family estate, the castle Nettling, uh, in Lower Saxony, and grew up in Kass Castle Brüggen. No, nothing. Oh, etc., etc. And uh, a younger brother, Wilhelm Ernst Freyern von Kram, was a German officer who was highly decorated. Uh, well, I'll let you read it yourself. Here's about his tennis career and imprison imprisonment for same sex affair. Uh, well, he survived, of course. He was married here to the Baroness Elisabeth Lisa von Dobeneck, the daughter of Robert Baron von Dobeneck. And, uh, and his wife, she was the granddaughter of a Jay Walker banker, Louise Hagen. Well, that's of course the nobility only marries nobility, so there was, of course, the Jay Walker nobility. So this was the um, 
the guy from the El Dorado, Gottfried von Kram, who you just saw together with Adolf Hitler. And in the Pink List Killer Club El Dorado in Berlin, all the pink swastika Nazis came together and abused each other like, are you going to dominate me or shall I dominate you tonight? Also, the aristocratic German Wimbledon tennis player, Freiherr Gottfried von Kram, had his pinkless killer escapades in the Berlin El Dorado club together with his equally aristocratic wife, the Baroness Elisabeth von Dobeneck, living their pinkless killer fantasies. So, here you see the pink list killer tennis star of Pharaoh's nobility together with Adolf Hitler. So this is the Wimbledon tennis player champion, Freiherr Gottfried von Kram, together with uh, Hitler. And this looks like Ernst Röhm, also a pink list killer. So this guy, he was a pink list killer, he was married, he was everything. And maybe this is him. It looks it looks like the same one. In this video, you can see on Netflix everything. Um, everything the Nazis hate. Well, they lied, you know. They, they didn't hate it. They, they were all pink list killers. And the film is called, or the documentary is called El Dorado. So he was also probably most likely a pink list killer. And the pink list killers, well, they hate the Muslims. They hate the Jews. Because in their religion, uh, pink list killerism is absolutely forbidden. And the Muslims even throw them off a roof and all that. So that's why nowadays all the uh, the, the neo-Nazi leaders, you know, they're all pink list killers again. Because now, because of the, of the Muslims. So I already told you that in my videos. Today we got Alice Weidel. Pink list killer leader, leader of the German AFD, Jörg Haider from Austria, pink list killer Florian Filippo from the Front National in France, pink list killers, etc., etc., and there are many more. I have already making that, shown you that in a video. And in the Nazi era of the Second World War and before, you got the uh, Jutta Rüdiger, pink list killer, and head of the uh, Bund Deutscher Mädels. There was the uh, the female uh, equivalent of the Hitler Youth. You got, of course, next to the children. Eh? They're always attracted uh, to children. And then Baldo von Schirach, an aristocrat, head of the head of the Hitler Youth, a pink list killer, Ernst Röhm. He was all the time in the El Dorado of the stormtroopers, the SA, the Sturmabteilung. So the same thing is repeating now as uh, Second World War against the jaywalkers and now against the Muslims. And it's coming up. I mean, um, concentration camps are ready. So this is very important, uh, Pharaoh's nobility. And it all leads back again to Pharaoh's nobility again. This is the, uh, the pink list killer story side of the whole story. And um, so remember the sun, the uh, winged sun disk of Horus, together with all this here. And for these kind of degenerate creatures and their lies, we did two world wars and we all died, just as we see today's leaders' behavior that hasn't changed over the centuries. The only way to stop the lies and the endless horizontal wars is through a vertical war. Only a vertical war can stop the horizontal wars. In the film The Commuter from 2018 with Liam Neeson, with seven minutes into the film, the number 101 all over the screen. Why? Well, the number 101 
is very much related with something bad, like getting tortured, getting killed, or just losing one's life. And exactly at this moment in the movie, Liam Neeson just lost his job and got sacked by his boss, making him feel as if he lost his life and means of existence. So here, it's, uh, here you see Liam Neeson in the uh, movie The Commuter. And here he just comes out of the um, out of the office where his boss just kicked him out and um, he lost his job. And immediately they show the 101. Yeah. You understand? So therefore, once again, the number 101. Because our masters know exactly what they're doing. So Liam Neeson was just in room 101, so to speak, where he lost his job, which was a painful experience for the, uh, the character in the movie um, being kicked out of his job. So, so to speak, he was in room 101, where there's torture, where there are not very nice things happening. And as I told you, the uh, 101 represents the Sun Hieroglyph, also called the Sun Hieroglyph. As in my film, The Pharaoh Show, from the year 2005. And the Sun Hieroglyph stands for the winged sun disk of Horus. Therefore, on the badges of the Alien Covenant movie, with the badges therefore saying 101. So this is the Alien Covenant movie. Here you see the Sun Hieroglyph, which is a 1 horizontally and the O here and here, which is the, uh, the Horus Sun Disk, actually. The winged Sun Disk of Horus, which you can see here. And these badges, they show exactly this here with the Valent Yutani in the Alien Covenant uh, movie. And it all has a meaning. So this symbol here, it does say 101. Well, if you got your back or your stomach exploding with a monster popping out, you might assume having a bad day with the 101 striking again. Like the bloke of the commuter movie coming home to his wife saying, Honey, I had one of those 101 days again. Where I got attacked by the 101 all over, even on the windows, straight in my face, so I couldn't miss it. Just another day at the office. So you see it, here's Liam Neeson here as well. It's everywhere, 101, 101, even on the windows, 101, 101. So it must be really important to them. So the movie is from 2018, and as they give messages away of something bad coming up, the 101 is coming up, well, what happened the next year in 2019? Well, Pharaoh's poison, eh? It's like an alien coming into your system, right? So here to the right, you can't even see the actor anymore and only the number, like here, it's everywhere. So the number is more important than the actor. And all these videos, movies, just before 2019, when Pharaoh's poison came, you know, they showed in all these movies right before the 101 all over, meaning something bad coming up, like room 101 is coming up, or the Horus Matrix, people dying. And that happened in 2019. 
So you see, people, you can't even see the actor anymore. So, I mean, what kind of a movie is this? They, you can't even see the, the actor disappeared, you know? And it's only the 101 is left all over. 101, 101, 101. With the circle for the compass in the middle. And so, look around if you see the 101, you know? If they're organizing something again something coming up something bad world war three or another pharaoh poison in part one of the room 101 series i showed you how the nazis had the notorious police battalion 101 of the horrendous einsatzgruppen who genocided 100,000 jaywalker men, women, and children by the 101 Nazi detachment. Then, only 10 years after the war, the jaywalkers of the JJ Bays in the Orient formed their own 101 Special Forces unit in 1955, which is, to my humble opinion, just as incoherent as selling yourself to the world as God's chosen people. How can God's chosen people be so incredibly undivinely blind and ungodly short-sighted as to honor the 101 Nazi battalion integrated into their own jaywalker army only 10 years after the end of the Second World War. How could you possibly do that? Uh, you see, the Special Forces Unit 101 is formed. Here's the Moshe Dayan, the general, and all the other guys. This is in 1955. Right? where the memories of the um, of the butchery and the whole catch are still very much alive in 1955. You know, the 101 is a very bad number, and I've shown that to all over everywhere. So I'll let you read it yourself. I mean, this is so incoherent, you know. I don't even want to read it for you. It's... I better stop saying more now. God's chosen and the devil's chosen, both using the evil 101 of the Horus winged sun disc. <laughs> Quite peculiar, I'd say. It says Horus, the 101, Horus. The Horus Nazi wings. You see, it's the same thing. The Nazis use the same Horus wings. You know, it's the same people in charge anyway. You know, in all the countries, they rule the whole world. These Nazi Templars or Pharaoh, or Pharaoh's nobility. Well, there you go. And even the number 101, can you imagine? You know, look, it's all the same. And we're all being betrayed by the enemy within of Pharaoh's nobility on all key positions. All these army wings come out of Egypt and represent Horus, the one-eyed god, whom the Muslims call the Dajjal, with the Horus winged sun disc. Both the Germans and the Jaywalkers have the 101 and the Horus wings on their army badges, and both the Germans and the Jaywalkers believe these pharaonic lies by their equally pharaonic governments. All peoples of the world should team up together in a vertical war to stop Pharaoh's horizontal wars. So it's all from Egypt here, the Horus wings, the winged sun disk of Egypt, which the Nazis had. This is a falcon. It's not a eagle. And here's the the, the winged sun disk. Here in the JJ base, by the by the uh, 
jaywalkers. It even, <laughs> they even call it the 101. And it has a serpent here, like Pharaoh's having the serpent um, on his uh, head. So here he's got the sun disk uh, over his head or around his head, Horus does. And here they got the Uraeus cobra uh, serpents. And it's, it is a cobra. They also call this detachment, the 101 JJ Bay's detachment, they also call it the cobra. So there you go. It's all the same. And um, it's all by Egypt. It's all by Pharaoh. So here it is about the the winged uh, sun disk of ancient Egypt. And in ancient Egypt, the symbol is attested from the old kingdom, Sneferu, uh, 26th century before Christ, often flanked on either side with a Uraeus cobra. That's a Uraeus. Well, didn't we just see that, the cobra snake on the badge of the... Um, on the Jaywalker Army 101 uh, of the JJ base. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's why, yes. Just like the winged uh, sun disk of uh, Horus, which we can see here one more time here. This is the Uraeus snake here on each side. And uh, here's some more, which is quite interesting. In Mesopotamia, in Iran, and also in, um, I'm not allowed to pronounce this, this is the JJ base. And from around the 8th century BC, the winged solar disk appears on Hebrew seals connected to the royal house of the kingdom of Judah. Many of these seals are jar handles from the Hezekiah reign, together with the inscription, Lamelech belong to the king. Uh, typically, uh, Hezekiah's royal seals feature the two downward pointing wings in six rays em emanating from the central sun disk, and some are flanked on each side with the Egyptian Ankh symbol. Prior to this, there are examples from the seals of servant of King Ahaz and of King Uzziah. Compare also Malachi 4. Uh, Malachi is the name used by the author of the book of Malachi. Well, I don't know if it's the Bible or the uh, the Torah. And it's referring to a winged son of righteousness. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of right righteousness arise with healing in his wings. I told you, all religion. So that's Malachi 4.2 are the King James Version, so it's in the Bible and also in the Torah. So it's the, the Old Testament, as they say. I told you, all religion is from Pharaoh, everything. And, um, and it is the Horus um, winged sun disk. So that means the things we see in Mesopotamia and in Babylon, they are not older than ancient Egypt. Egypt, it says also in the Bible, the Egyptians are the oldest people in the world. And um, it's all from Egypt. You know, Horus, it's the Horus winged sun disk in Mesopotamia from Egypt. So this is the website about them. H.R. Giga, Hans Ruedi Giga. And here, the Ridley Scott's uh, film, uh, Alien. Uh, and here it says, um, he was born here yeah, in Switzerland, and he died in Zurich in Switzerland. He also had a girlfriend, the Swiss actress, Lee Toba, Tobler, and she killed herself in 1975. You know, I guess why, eh? Yeah, there she is, the whole girly. And um, so I'll let you read it yourself here. So, yeah, uh, here it says Giga's Alien, 1979. Uh, Necronomicon. Oh, it's all about, it's all about death and, you know. Giga's art has greatly influenced tattooists and fetishists and whatnot. 
And um, so here, you know, he's the guy behind all the Alien movies. This one, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3. And here, Alien Resurrection, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator, Requiem, well, etc., etc. The Alien, The Covenant, there you go. That's the one, eh? That's the one we're talking about. And etc., etc. You got a lot of recognition. Um, well, you read it yourself. So, this is Swiss guy behind Alien. These creatures communicate through secret messages with each other as a part of a global invasion over this earth keeping humanity as their livestock in total slavery. Therefore, looking around outside to find their symbols in stone, in publicity, on police cars, at the Justice Department, and other of their authorities, is the same as scrutinizing their movies that are always full of pharaonic objects. As these very shocking army badges on the uniforms of the colonizers of a new habitable planet in the movie Alien Covenant from 2017, where they give out the creepy message how the pharaonic masters invaded planet Earth, exterminating the original Earthlings through demon-like beings. In the movie, the masters of Pharaoh's nobility, also called the Aryans from Ari On, are plainly telling their own history and how they wiped out the locals from planet Earth, who were some Neanderthal-like prehistoric race, of whom we still find skeletons today, about which they tell us that they are our ancestors of humanity. And what the intel and message of the movie definitely proves wrong, that the Neanderthals supposedly are our ancestors, as this genocide took place on planet Earth, also called the Reset or the Horus Matrix. So these are the badges of the movie Alien Covenant from 2017, just before the real evil came in 2019. And here it says Covenant, and here too Covenant, together with the winged sun disk of Horus, which the Nazis also show. And I'm going m much deeper into this here, later on in the video. A covenant, as in the title of this alien movie, is part of an alliance. So a covenant is like the agreement and the written part of an alliance, if you want. So an alliance and covenant with whom? Or with what? with something very evil, that's for sure. Otherwise, they wouldn't show the 101 all the time. So, this is the 101, just like this one. If you put it up, it's a 1, and they do put it up in many of these symbols, and here as well, so it says 101. Just like in that Freemason Lodge, in that Russian video, uh, Silver Skates. And there's one too. You've got the wing here and the wing here, and you've got the O in the middle here. And you can put the wings up, like this one here. And this one they show it all the time in the movie Alien Covenant. So it says Alien Covenant. It's a covenant with aliens. It really says it, you know. Like here, Alien Covenant. Yeah. And I just showed you this head before 
with the Swiss flag. And you might say, oh, it's Swiss again. You know, you really exaggerate it. But the alien movie, it was a Swiss idea by a Swiss guy called Giga. Swiss, he is always into it, eh? Always in it, somewhere and everywhere and always. So, the covenant. I just show you the picture before where it really says here, with the, with the winged sun disk of Horus, it says the covenant. And we see it everywhere in all these towns, everywhere. The covenant. This is the covenant. You know, the covenant of the Horus matrix, you know, doing a genocide, you know, now and then. So here you see a small screenshot from the movie Alien Covenant, the Alien Covenant, a covenant with the aliens, yeah. And here he has this badge here where it says Covenant, and here is the Horus uh, winged sun disc. And here it says this Wayland Yutani. It's probably a company or something. We will probably pop up the a company with the very same name in the near future. You know. So here's the comparison. This is ancient Egypt. This is the Horus winged sun disc. So this is the sun disc and here are the wings. And here is the um the logo on the badge which you can see here from the movie. And it's exactly the same thing. You know, there are three rows, so you got this part here, which is exactly this here. So here are three rows, one, two, three, and here also one, two, three. So you got the feathers here on the ancient Egyptian thing, and you'll find it back here on the on the badge of the uh, the military invaders, and you got this one part here, which is this here, this row, and then you got this here, which is this, and then you have the sun disk, which is exactly the same thing. So, you know, it really is the covenant is with Horus. You know, there's no doubt. And as I told you, we're being ruled by. The Egyptians by Pharaoh and the base is Switzerland. So, and on the Space Invader Army badges, it says Covenant together with the Horus winged sun disk. So, on the insignia, it shows the Horus winged sun disk covenant, meaning that the covenant is with Pharaoh. And more specifically, with Horus and the Horus Matrix, meaning the genocide and recreation of the males into soy boys through all these horizontal wars where the men die by the millions, leaving their pregnant women behind, who will raise the baby boys new from scratch and not anymore after the image of god and creation but after the image of the evil ones of pharaoh's nobility just as the pink list killers massively advocate to kill the patriarchy in all their protest marches which is in fact an appeal for violence, for genocide, and for the Horus Matrix by our masters. To kill the patriarchy means to kill the fathers. From the Latin word pater, meaning father. So when it says here by the pink list killers, uh, these ones here, to kill the patriarchy, it means the Horus Matrix to kill the fathers and to raise the sons new from scratch and make another product out of them. And here it says, the Horus Matrix, an appeal for violence that these ones do. And this is one of their flags here uh, of the pink list killers of these ones who want to kill the patriarchy to uh, reshape and recreate the males new in another form like not anymore after the image of god 
And now I'm going to show you what some Englishman, what he made out of this. So if you see this flag here and you put one here upside down or here to the right and here underneath and here from the left, you get this uh, swastika, which is not a coincidence, by the way, because this is a Templar V and it is the Nazi Templars. And well, I didn't make this, but it was Lawrence Fox, an English guy of the Reclaim Party, which is a political party. I'm not sure if he is the one who, who made this really, but he published it. And he got a lot of problems because of all these very violent pink list killers who do this appeal for violence against, um, against the patriarchy. And I suppose Lawrence Fox, he is a father, so he's part of the patriarchy, and they say it, you know, black on white, or rather pink on white, that they want to kill the fathers and the patriarchy, which is the Horus Matrix. And you can read it in this book here, written by a religious Christian and a, a jaywalker from Israel, that in fact... Uh, the top Nazis, they were all pink list killers. So go find yourself the pink swastika. And um, that gives all the proofs and all the facts that this is very real. And if you look at this here, you know, from the side of the, uh, the invisible world and demons and all this, you know, uh, the demons, they know that this, you know, that this thing here, they will make this here. I can't even pronounce all the words, you know, because of the um, the complete censorship and dictatorship we're in. And also watch my videos that um, which add to this here, and most of all about the uh, the new uh, right wing parties that are all all the chiefs and leaders of the new right wing parties. They're all pink list killers. And what I didn't find in this book here was like Jutta Rüdiger, who was the head of the Bund Deutscher Mädels, and some other very high-ranked uh, pink list killers in top Nazi positions during World War II and now afterwards. So maybe these guys here, if they would watch my videos, they can make a new edition. I've got nothing against it that they use my information on this. Just leave me the honor that I told them. So, so this is a reality. It's, and all the proofs are here. So there's no disinformation here. And again, I didn't make it. I'm only telling about this, how um, Lawrence Fox published this. So, okay. So don't censor my videos and put me in prison because I talk about this. You know, in Europe nowadays, you know, if you talk about these ones here with all these colors and, you know, the uh, the pink list killers, if you, if you talk about it and say something they don't want to hear, you go to prison. You know, it's, um, it's a horrible situation. You know, it's a Nazi situation. You know, it's all connected anyway. So going back to this picture, it says eliminate the fathers and raise their sons new from scratch, which is the Horus Matrix. And look how horrible they make the fathers look like, you know, ready to be killed, you know, doesn't matter anyway. Look, look how horrible and ag sort of an aggressive face, you know. So this is definitely, th they're telling the story of this planet and all the horizontal wars and how they um, how they kill the fathers, pater in Latin it means father. Kill the patriarchy, what the pink list killers say, you know. And uh, so this is what's happening. And they showed openly, you know, for those who understand, in in the movies. It's definitely the Horus Matrix being shown here. And this is what happened to our planet, you know. The Horus Matrix, and as the title of the movie, 
alien covenant. So this apparently is an alien covenant. You know? Killing the patriarchy. It's, it's, uh, it's an evil idea. And um, so I suppose, I assume, they are not even lying, that it is an alien covenant. I mean, how, how would you as a normal person, you know, get an idea like this, you know, to, to kill the fathers in all these horizontal wars, just to raise uh, mankind or the males new from scratch? You know, it, it's, it's an alien idea, you know. I, w I wouldn't invent an idea like this, you know, and, and do something horrible like this. And it's so obvious in the movie. They, they tell a lot of truth in all these movies. And, uh, and this is funny too. You see all these dead people, you know, they were burned like or with a sort of a bomb. Uh, and, and look what's walking around here in the middle of it. And here's also this wing thing, you know. And the covenant, again, I'll show you the covenant once more. And the covenant is with Horus which is a sort of, he's flying around like an alien. You know? And it's all coming from Egypt. And of course, they're Swiss based because uh, the alien movie is um, by this Swiss guy, uh, Giga. So here it is again. The, this is the covenant with Egypt, with the, uh, with the win winged sun disk of Horus. It's all over. This is the covenant. The Horus Matrix. This is here it says. And this part here, you know, it's like it's the sun hieroglyph here. Uh, as it is here. And you can buy these, you know, with the covenant and the Horus Matrix, you know, on a head, just like in the movies. I guess the, these things are being bought massively by the pink list killers. And they put on their t-shirt, their pink t-shirt, and say, kill the patriarchy together with the badge here, which is the covenant with Horus. So here is the beast, alien covenant, as in my film, the Swiss beast, home of the devil, where the seven hills are, where Hitler was financed, etc. This is the beast. So in numbers, the 101 stands for Horus. And this here, the whole Second World War was a Horus matrix. You know, killing the patriarchy, you know, and with all the pink list killers in key positions, you know, in, uh, at, in the Nazi party, killing the patriarchy. And this is what happened. All the fathers died and their sons, you know, they're kind of lost, you know, and, and the grandsons in this uh, era, in, this, in the end times, so to speak. So here's 101, the Horus Matrix for the Second World War. Just in this, as in that video, the, um, the alien covenant, the covenant with Horus and Egypt. To understand the Horus Matrix, one must know the Egyptian mythology of Isis, Osiris, Set, and Horus. And while telling you the Isis story and explaining you the Horus Matrix, I'll show some pictures from the Alien Covenant movie and how they are walking around with their occult badges showing their pharaonic belief system while they're telling how they genocided earth and practice the ancient pharaonic Horus matrix by killing those dangerous males who wanted to defend the human nest against the alien invaders. The movie tells it all and even much more. Isis was pregnant with her son Horus when Set or Seth, the brother of Osiris, came flying in, who said, Isis, listen, if we kill your husband, Osiris, and father of the child, then you can raise your son alone, the way you want him to become, and not after the image of God 
anymore. Just as when you want to make an obedient dog out of a wolf. You need a puppy wolf to do so. Then Isis screamed, Are you crazy? Osiris is my beloved husband. Go away, you creep. And zoot, Seth flew away. Until some months later, when Isis and Osiris had a terrible quarrel. So she shouted, Seth, where are you? I don't want that man anymore. He said such bad things to me, and he's not obedient to me. Okay, I'll deal with it, said Seth, and he flew away. Then he killed his brother, Osiris, cut him up into thirteen pieces, which he threw into the river Nile. It is thus that Isis raised her son Horus all by herself and made an obedient little boy out of him, which is the Horus matrix and one of the reasons behind all those endless horizontal wars in order to breed a new human race of obedient men who never had their fathers to teach them about the real issues of life. So even here in the movie Alien Covenant, it shows the winged sun disc of Horus on the wrist watch telling time and what not. So this means they are like announcing here and transmitting the message that it is time. This is the time. It is time for another Horus matrix. Here's the Horus sun, uh, the winged sun disc. So time, Horus matrix. It's time for another horizontal wall, uh, killing a lot of people. Just as the pink list killers publicly announce to kill the patriarchy. Therefore, all the top Nazis were all pink list killers during Second World War. And so are today's neo Nazi leaders, of which you can find all the proofs in this book here about the Second World War and the time before, that all the top Nazi leaders, they were pink list killers. The proofs are there, and the facts are there, and um, all the information is there. So you don't have to come with your censorship and your hate speech and all that, because all the facts and all the names all the proofs that the uh, today's uh, neo-Nazi leaders, that they're all pink list killers, are in this video here. And they're saying it, you know. I love smashing the patriarchy with you. They do an appeal for violence. So I hope I can say something about this, you know. So YouTube and all your censorship, you better do against the appeal. Do something against this appeal for violence here and leave my video alone because i i make videos for peace and a better world so this video i made it four years ago and it's uh, here is the title and it's on the same channel as here and in this video i show more about the pink list killers this is jutta rudiger she was the head of the bund deutscher medals that was the biggest nazi organization biggest uh, Nazi youth organization and the biggest youth organization in the world with 5 million uh, girlies and she was a pink list killer and all the top Nazis are pink list killers and were pink list killers so all the proofs are here and you can see that it's the same channel Gure, uh, in 2022 so that's uh, um, a year ago or two years ago. 
All the facts are here, all the proofs are here. They want to, the pink list killers, they are in the Horus Matrix. And they want to kill the patriarchy. The word patriarchy comes from the Latin pater. It means killing the fathers and raise the sons new from scratch and then put them in the Hitler Youth and completely indoctrinate them. That is the Horus Matrix and the pink list killers are entirely behind it. The proofs are there, the facts are there, the names are there, the dates are there. It's all there, you know. You can't just close your eyes and come with your censorship and, uh, you know, and hate speech and, and attack, the, um, at, at, attack the facts and the proofs. Don't do it, you know. This is what the badge and the alien movie transmits to all the initiated ones, showing that badge saying the covenant with the Horus winged sun disk for the covenant of the Horus matrix, thus needing genocides and horizontal wars. As the genocide on that planet, and probably our planet, shown in the alien movie where the entire population got wiped out by some killer demons getting in through the body openings like the mouth and into the nose or into the ears and then physically manifest in the host's bodies and grow inside as you can see here in the movie which is in fact exactly what they did with pharaoh's poison injected into our bodies after that pharaonic flu of 2019 and the alien covenant video from 2017 tells that story how they wipe out entire planets like this so here it says alien covenant 2017 when the film was released and here you see the alien you know being inhaled into the nose no not even inhaled it goes by himself you can see this in the movie you know here it is and this is what happened two years later or maybe even one year later in 2019 the pharaoh flew into the nose Look, the movie Alien Covenant, talking about a monster inside, got released in 2017, right before the real monster inside, two years later in 2019, with Pharaoh's Poison. So here it says, the, the movie 2017, which was a message for the insiders, it says alien covenant it's an alien covenant it says it here you know here you see the alien here with a uh, with a needle in 2019 it's the execution of the plan so this is an actual uh, screenshot from the picture with this monster you know getting out of the stomach the guy you know look at his hands you know so from the movie alien covenant from 2017 a monster growing inside on this side and on this side and this is what happened in 2019 see all the aliens here and also a monster growing inside doesn't it now so the alien movie was a global message announcing the coming arrival of the beast inside as some prefer to call the beast system therefore the title of the movie alien covenant and a covenant is a promise or an agreement of something that was promised and agreed upon probably a long time ago like in ancient egypt with their gods their pharaohs and their demons so here you see from the movie the um it says the covenant with the uh, the winged sun disk of Horus, which you see here is 
again, it says covenant, with the covenant with Egypt, because this is the same thing. So it's an ancient covenant, which is now being realized now in the, probably the end times, eh? As in real time, in 2019, and in the alien movie time of 2017, it shows an invader parasite taking over its host, the beast taking over its host, as in the mark of the beast, the alien covenant beast, and the beast of Pharaoh's poison of 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. In the Netflix series La Révolution, The Revolution, from 2020, so more than 200 years after the French Revolution of 1789, in episode number 8, it also shows the beast inside the nobility, with 8 minutes from the end a huge octagon, or in English, the octagon, where the aristocratic beast is standing. The film is a French production, and you don't randomly blend in a huge octagon in connection with the nobility like that, unless you are initiated and know what it means. And it certainly is not a mere coincidence that they show the octagon in episode number eight and eight minutes from the end. That is three times the eight in a row, like 888, the number of the beast who has a man in this video. So here it says La Révolution from October 2020 on Netflix. And here it says, Et si on nous avait menti? And what if they have lied to us? Who? Well, these ones here, the nobility. So here you see the big octagon. And this guy of the nobility, I think he was a duke or something. He really is the beast. And that's why the series is about. And I think it's very interesting. And it goes deeper still and beyond our imagination. Anyone sees it? Inside the star-formed octagon is another eight-sided octagon. And in that octagon is a circle, also called the inner circle, the compass or concept of three, which is them, our masters, who get protected by the Templar octagon, like police, secret service, presidential guard, and military all around the inner circle of pure pharaoh nobility. The whole thing is in an oval, like the Oval Office in America, for example, that has to be protected from the people, from the slaves, who are represented by the concept of four, of all the black squares surrounding the oval and surrounding the inner circle. The floor is from a genuine French castle, as you can see all the cracks in it. The masters of Pharaoh's nobility always leave their secret messages everywhere, both in buildings and in movies. So this one you see, the star octagon, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stars. And remember this black and white, I did a video about that once. And here you see another octagon, or they call it also a uh, octogram. Yeah. And here is the inner circle. 
I mean, why did they make it? I mean, it's a, it's a lot of hassle, you know, to, to put this little circle in it. You know, it has a meaning, therefore. And this is the inner circle, which is protected here by the octagon. There are several octagons. And this is the second octagon layer, you know, like pointing outwards for, you know, for the rough protection. And here once more, the inner protection. And here, all around it, are the black squares, the concept of four, which is us, the people, which I explain in other videos, the concept of three and four. So it does say, here's the concept, uh, this is the square, it says the square and compass. With a compass, you can draw a circle. And it also says the number seven, three and four together, which makes a G, and therefore the G is always, you know, uh, in the middle between the square and compass. And um, here are some more octagons. So that means within the people, uh, the black squares, and outside of the oval, the oval office, which comes out of the Vesi Capiscas, you know, the circles like the Audi car, and in the middle. So that means we are a chain, one for all and all for one. It's a chain, you know. You, you, you I mean, they're a chain. They're all connected, like and all protecting each other like making a chain you see so amongst the people it's all infiltrated you know by the octagon everything is infiltrated you know all organizations you know by the people you know like the germans had the national socialists in the beginning it got all infiltrated and then uh turned against the people and it became the ss in black and in russia they had the um international socialism the bolsheviki you know it also got infiltrated by the communists and stalin and in 1934 they killed them all the same in germany in the night of the long knives it happened simultaneously in germany and in russia killing the people there were all you know workers movements so everything is infiltrated amongst the people which is the square which is the the down at the pyramid where the grass is and the circle is the concept of three which is the side of the pyramid and the the hierarchy and uh which is them our masters so amongst the people you know the traitors are everywhere and they're even bigger than the people as you can see here the octagon so in this guy he's a bit bigger than this one you see in spite of the fact he's on his knees you know he's got the blue sash for the wall against the people like and he's much bigger look at his head you know and he's the beast he even has an octagon here on his chest where the heart is of course and a templars we it seems like in his jacket there's probably more to see you know and he's a lot bigger this is the beast within the the nobility so for me this is very interesting you know that there are people who made this movie who know this and Within the nobility, they talk about the beast. So they're talking about the internal war within the nobility. And of course, this war is the war between the Republicans and the Royalists. So this king, he was a real king before, or a duke or whatever, the, uh, the lord of the castle. And then he became the beast. So there must be a reference to the Republicans and the Knights Templars. That's why the octagon is here, which is a reference to the Knights Templars. It's everywhere where you find a ruins or, you know, an archeologist. And if it's octagonal, you know that the Knights Templars did it, you know. So this is all a reference to the Knights Templars and about the internal wall. So these guys who made this video here, they must be royalists, you know, and this is the beast. As the French King Philip the Fair, he said, well, the Knights Templars, they are Satanists and sodomites we better get rid of them you know they're very evil you know and he did not lie and especially his um prosecutor guillaume de nogari the most powerful man in the french empire very highly intelligent man and um so that's why what it is about it's all you know if you're not initiated you know well you will never understand all these things yeah um well you know my story once in Switzerland, I found this plastic cake form from a supermarket, Swiss cake, 
where it showed the exact same pharaonic octagon protecting the inner circle from the square, which they call the triple layer of power. When I saw it, I almost choked myself to death with a chunk of the power cake getting stuck in my larynx. So here you can see it. He got the inner circle here, and which is protected with the octagon here. Here's another circle. Here's the octagon, like the police and the army, the secret service. And here around it is the square. And the concept of square, the base of the pyramid where the slaves are, the people, you know. And this is the concept of three. I explained it in other videos. I'm not going to do it again. And that stands for the um, the compass. With a compass, you can make a circle. And the compass is the concept of three, which is the side of a pyramid. So exactly the same thing. And the, and the cook, the uh, the cake, the Swiss cake was on this here. I was so sh shocked. I nearly choked on a piece of Swiss cake. The uh, the Swissies almost had me there, eh? choking on the Swiss cake. Yeah. So. I made this video, it happened 11 years ago, so it's probably 12 years. And it's in my channel, Gatse Frats. Here's the title, so you just punch in this here. I also had it in uh, in English. I've, they probably took it off. I, I don't know where it is. I made more than 1,000 videos. And hundreds of my videos, entire channels, has been taken off by the... Uh, by the dictatorship where we are living in. So that was January the 8th, 2013. So that's, uh, yeah, 11 years, 11 years ago. So maybe it's still there somewhere, or maybe someone saved it. And again, this channel, they're going to take it off very soon. Might be in a couple of days, Hats of Hats. It's coming soon. So you better download the videos. I don't have it anymore. And... Uh, I can promise you, if they take away the channel and nobody puts the, the videos back, I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll entirely stop this because there isn't enough support you know, from you people. I'm doing it for you, and there's not enough support. You know. So download it and upload it again, all this. Otherwise, this here is going to disappear. Yeah, look, I found the English version for you which I apparently made nine years ago in 2015, right before the Swiss Nazi police arrested me again on July the 16th, 2015, with a huge army of blue uniforms right in front of my three-year-old daughter, Alvina, who cried her heart out, and my 12-year-old son, Rivan, who remained traumatized for many years. Well, okay, instead of the Swiss Nazi police, the Swiss octagon cake nearly choked me to death. Can you imagine the utter shame of being choked to death by a chunk of Swiss cake? Well, I picture the YouTube titles, Homie Ross slain by a Swiss cake, or Sean Quixote, Missed by an inch by a windmill, but the octagon cake finally did the job. What a bloody nightmare that whole country is altogether. Their damn cakes included. Shitty land for Swizzyland. So here's the video, and here's the here's the title. So you just punch in the title on the channel Gatsafrats. And this is when I uploaded it in 2015, right before I got arrested again. Maybe they arrested me because of this. Maybe this was the uh, the final drop, you know, in the bucket. Like, uh, uh, yeah, so I I got another white one, another white cake, you know, like Freemason Lodge, you know. Here on the 2017 badge. And right before the 2019 pharaoh poison attack on my mankind, it says building better 
worlds. So here it says, building better worlds. The Alien 2017 movie. And here the covenant with the the winged sun disk of Horus. So that's the covenant, which is the Horus matrix. It is thus how the evil ones want to create better worlds, as it shows on another one of those army badges in the film Alien Covenant, with those winged creatures forming the winged sun disk of Horus, with a wing on each side and the sun disk in the middle, and King Solomon's pillars, Yachin and Boaz, on each side saying the word covenant in between the two Freemason pillars. Some might see angels or Lucifer in the two winged and faceless creatures. But let me tell you that all religions come out of Pharaoh's empire, where there's basically just one winged god, which is Horus. And if you want to call Horus Lucifer, well, that's fine with me, because that's what it practically is. Your biblical light bearer is the sun and its sun disk shining the light. So here you see the, um, the badge that they're walking around with. And um, here's the winged sun disk. Here it says USCSS some probably for a spaceship as well you know but it, it means of course also something else you know and here there's wayland yutani i mean wayland you know it's 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 far away a land far away maybe written with an e instead of an a yutani i've i've got no idea what that is but it does have a meaning meaning uh everything has a meaning so here you see the two pillars, Yachin and Boaz. And there are four stars for the concept of four. You know, that's us, the, the slaves, the people at the base of the pyramid, you know, the who, whom they're going to uh, genocide, you know. So there must also be the concept of three, which is, of course, uh, the, this planet here. So, like here, you see a wing, and here's the sun disk. You know, the light, as in the light bearer. And here the other wing. So here you see one wing. Here's the sun, the sun disk in the middle. And here the other wing. So this here is saying the same as here, only with these sort of creatures. And they are faceless, you know. And there are two of them. So... And if you, so here it says, building better worlds. And they're walking around in the, in the video, you know, straight in our faces. Yeah? Why, do, why do they want to build better worlds? I mean, what does it mean? It's, it, it's, it's about this creature, this alien, you know. It's not about building better worlds. It's, um, well, it is. But I mean, the movie for us slaves, it isn't really. Uh, it's a thriller, you know. It's the... Uh, a, a creepy alien movie, but for them, th this is the message, internal message to them. And now, if we count here, all these uh, strokes here, you know, it must be an octagon, right? So there's the little ones, and there are the big ones. And if I count them all, you know, because it's a bit complicated, like here, you know, I can't really see it now. So I start top. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. What do you know? Isn't that two times eight? Okay, so if all the little ones are eight, you know, one, it's you know, and all the big ones here, the longer ones, are also eight. So it says two times octagon. All right, you think that's a coincidence? No, it isn't. An octagon is the uh, the army guys walking around with these badges. That's octagon. 
And you see that they are around the inner circle, as I told you before, and so many times, and it's everywhere. And where's the square? Well, that's the concept of four. Here they are, one, two, three, four, which is always the outer circle. Uh, so the uh, the inner circle has to be protected by the octagon around the inner circle from the square or the concept of four. One, two, three, four. You know, the slaves, the people. It's everywhere, people. It's everywhere. They just rub it straight in our faces. And all these movies... Just like on the buildings, you know, it's another way of doing it in stone on a building. You know, they do it on um, in a movie. And you think it's a good movie, nice colors and nice actors. And, well, they use a lot of demons for that, you know. You know, so you, so the actors look nice and the picture look nice. And, but they're um, transmitting messages. To each other, and uh, ah, look, the Yachin and Boas are three, one, two, three lines in it for the concept of three, because that was King Solomon, wasn't it? Hey, a king, a pharaoh. His daughter was married with the uh, w with Pharaoh, and um, the daughter of King Solomon. So here's the concept of three. Three lines and there are four stars, so it says square and compass. You know. And uh, they are, of course, the pillars, Yachin and Boaz. And the whole thing is in blue. This is in blue for the war color of Pharaoh. This here is in blue. And what's the other color? Well, it's white for the New World's Order. You know, here's white. Here's a lot of white. And here's white. And here's white. And. Uh, yeah, so I had to put this in red for you. I get it. Look, here they are walking around in the video in the movie Alien Covenant 2017. It even says it. It's an alien covenant, eh? And you see them walking around with these badges, and you wouldn't even notice, you know, because there's so many th other things going on, like horrible creatures popping out of your stomach and uh, all these nice actors and the, all the other things. You know, it's subliminal. It really is subliminal. You know, and look, they're filming you. You know, you're being videotaped, just like if you go to a train station in a supermarket, in a bus or whatever. Everywhere they're filming us, you know. So here, you got the other badge here. Here's this, uh, the Horus uh, winged uh, sun disk of the Nazis. And uh, you got this weird electronic stuff on his uh, cap. And here you see it. It says again the covenant with those two, two times Horus, two times um, Lucifer for one of them, for some of you. Here it says building better worlds. You can't even read it, you know. Uh, without Homie Ross, you would never have known. And it, there is an octagon. Like I told you, all the police badges, army badges, like in 3D, in our world, which isn't our world, they're all octagonal. You know, I've, I've shown you this so many times. Maybe they've been taking off, taken off these videos, I don't know. And there are more important things to see, but I'll keep that for another time. Okay? And another screenshot from the movie. I don't know what kind of a gun this is. They probably have these things. Oh, it's sure they do have these sort of guns, you know. He got the electronic device in his uh, in his cap. They all they also have this, you know. So in these two badges, you know, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are at least eight subliminal messages in it. Again, eight which you don't see if, you know, it's going fast in the movie and you don't pay attention. It's subliminal. It's telling a story and you see the action. And that's what you're looking at, that the action. But you're not looking at the subliminal action, which is the real action here. You know, like the information is the only weapon we have talking about action. 
So this is number one, the uh, the winged uh, sun disc of Horus. And it says uh, also covenant, but not in this picture. So there are two things, the, uh, the covenant and the winged sun disc of Horus. Then you got here the two times the um, these uh, angels with the uh, the whole thing is a winged sun disc. Here's the wing. Here's the sun disc. So that's uh, three things. Here it says covenant. Four things. The two pillars, Yashin and Boaz. Five things. Four stars. Six things. There are eight arrows around it. That's seven things. It's the concept of four that are already eight things it says building better worlds that's nine things well etc 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 they don't have any faces uh, ten things it's all subliminal and then it says wayland yutani whatever that is it's some sort of a company the, um, the company probably exists i i looked it up i couldn't find it but it's um probably a hidden company a company right eh? And the color blue, of course. The colors blue and white. White for the New World Order, the horizontal rule. And blue for the war. And I put the red in it for the Old World Order, for the royalists uh, amongst us. And for building better worlds, it needs the to destroy the Old One. Like Horus, the light bearer with his shining sun disk who wants to destroy the creation in order to build a better one or at least that's what he thinks and both the alien movie from 2017 and pharaoh's poison right after from 2019 were the Swissies behind it. The man behind the alien creature is the Swiss Hans Rua de Giger, Geiger in English, having these morbid fantasies of bringing this beast inside, taking control of its host, and then calling it art. So here it says Swiss Geiger in Swiss German Giga, probably coming from Geiger. It means a violin or a constructor of violins, probably in his ancestry. And then the E had been taken off somehow, maybe to make it better, make it look better in English. So here he is in a sarcophagus putting his hands like a pharaoh. The guy's highly initiated. And here, you see all, the, it says transhumanism made in Swaziland. You see all the transhumanism here with machines and things getting inside of your body, taking over the host. And here, you see there are three heads are completely visible, the concept of three. And there is still one here, the fourth. So in a way, the three are accentuated. They always do this. Concept of three for the compass, and altogether there are four for the square. So it says square and compass. And um, so his name is Hans Ruedi, just like the corrupt Swiss Nazi cop. Um, his name was also Hans Ruedi, who... Um, who threatened me and just lied things together, you know, to put Homie Ross away. So here it says HR for Hans Ruedi, Giga. And so in high German, it's Geiger, or Geiger is a violin, and Geiger is someone who plays the violin. But in Swiss German, a violin is uh, a Kieger. And here it says Giga, somebody who plays the violin. And here it says the initiate. And here the eye of Horus. So remember, Horus, he had uh, in the battle with uh, Set, he lost one eye. Uh, probably the one the Arabs call him the uh, Dajjal. 
or the Muslims call him the Dajjal. So he is doing the joining here, like Trump, like Merkel, like um, Erdogan, like Putin, Macron. They're all doing this, all these pharaonic politicians. And he's seen with this creature here, two creatures. And here he's doing the all-seeing eye of uh, uh, Horus. So the all-seeing eye on the dollar is uh, it's a reference to Horus, which is the covenant, really. So the guy is highly initiated. I mean, that's why they gave him a lot of money for his so-called art. And even Hollywood, they made a, a whole series of videos uh, around this guy. So this is the alien guy, you know, really. And here on the mask, you see a lot of squares and a lot of circles, you know, definitely say square and compass all over. So, and here you can see four fingers for the concept of four and all these things, you know. And um, highly initiated, highly, highly initiated. And I mean, just look in his eyes, you know, there's something is, is off, you know, something odd. It's, it looks very cold and like staring like into your inner being. I don't know. It's, um, it's, I can't say more. Everything is forbidden, you know, to express your, your thoughts about things. And it's also interesting, you know, there's this arrow going up, which is in fact, uh, I think it's, it's a runic sign um of this arrow going up and i think it has to do something with death okay so the guy is a real heavyweight in black magic and all this you know what we can see here so this rune as you can see here as well is the tivas rune or taiwat it's the god tier and it's the god of war and you can use this amulet for a magic spell for victory. So in this case, the alien case of this being inside of humanity in conjunction with the Klaus Schwab um, Pharaoh's poison, they're all Swiss. Um, we can assume it's a victory over humanity with all these evil beings. And you see these, they are round, you know, these glasses, and there are four of them. One glass is the compass, it's the concept of three, and four of them is the concept of four, so it says square. So it says here square and compass, and he's doing the joining here. But he's knowing exactly what he's doing. And then the rune, the, 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 uh, the Tibat's rune of the god Tyr, and uh, it's a god of war, which is a magic spell for victory. It's an incantation if you want to achieve victory, like victory over mankind. So, and again, it's Switzerland, as it always is. It's sort of an Aleister Crowley type of guy, you know. And what happened to Aleister Crowley? He met a Swiss girlfriend in, um, in the canton of Bern. Her name was Lea Hersig. They even had a child together, which they sacrificed in Sicily in the Thelema temple next to a, um, a Templar's commandery of the, um, of the Teutonic Knights, who are branched, who are the German-speaking branch of the Knights Templars, as they were forbidden in France. And so they started to speak German in, um, in Switzerland, where the, uh, the Covenant, right? So, and Alistair Crowley, he was a normal type of guy, an adventurer, a mountaineer, mountain climbing. So, yeah, obviously you want to go to Switzerland if, you're, if you do mountain climbing. And then uh, everything went real, became real evil, meeting this Swiss Lea Hersig and, uh, and whatnot. You know, he got uh, initiated in Switzerland. You know. We might say the poor uh, Alistair Crowley. I'm probably the only person that says so, you know, the poor guy. Uh, and with the poor guy, of course, I meant, of course, Alistair Crowley and not this, this one here. Eh? 
not this HR Geiger Swissy now. And I meant with uh, the poor guy that uh, Alistair Crowley that he ended up in Swissyland where he got the evil inside, you know. So that's the poor f thing going on. Um, making him a poor guy that, um, you know, wrong place, wrong time sort of thing, you know. You know what I mean, eh? And of course, you know, doing the all seeing eye is the covenant with Horus. You know, Horus with one eye. So the whole video, the alien video and its maker, you know, the inventor, it's it's a covenant with Horus. It's a magic spell, just like that uh Tiva's rune. And there's a real heavy dude here, a heavyweight in, in black magic. You know, so doing the all-seeing eye, it's the eye of Horus. And here is the Horus winged sun disc, which is all over the video. And it's from here. It's from Egypt. So, yeah, I told you, Swaziland is the base of Pharaoh. And um, the guy is heavily initiated. Also was I from the from the house of uh, Saint Croix Rose du Plessis. And, um, but initiated not in this black magic, but in the others, in the other world, like, so to speak. Otherwise I could never have known all this. And, uh, well, I already told you in one video that in uh, the lineage of my uh, of the house of Saint Croix Rose du Plessis in South Africa for 350 years, it was a tradition in the family that uh, uh, we got initiated, you know, from the age of um, of 12 uh, onwards about the evil ones, you know, so that one day we might come back to the origins in France. And uh, I'll do something about these guys here, which I'm doing. So download my videos because they will disappear one day. And so will I. I will disappear one day or they make me disappear, these ones here. And um, so it's up to you. It's, you know, to, um, to save the videos and download them and, 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 and print out the, the text, you know, and everything. You know, it's it's your part of humanity to do this. I did this part and you do the other part. I can't do it all, you know. And if you don't do it, you know, the consequences will be obvious. So the Tiba's rune of the god Tyr and the magic spell for victory, the god of war, it stands on these creatures. You know, it's not on the wall behind them. So it means the victory over these creatures which they lead into our organisms of the humans who will be victorious over humanity. This is what it means. You know, this, this one here, the Tiva's rune for victory of the god of war, Tyr. And uh, we can see it in the video, you know, they're taking over the host. This is what they want to do. These creatures with all their symbols and their signs, look at their signs and um, it's they want a victory of this creepy organisms in humanity. And maybe this is the outcome because it, it looks a bit human. So this is probably the reset, you know, what they want to do, what what they want to make out of humanity with no more eyes, like you know. No more soul. The, 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 the eyes are the windows of the soul, as they say. Well, there are no more eyes. There's only windows, like four round windows saying square and compass. You know? And um, this is the Horus Matrix, the recreation of mankind. Uh, it, this is, this is um, Horus. This is what it's about. And it stands here on these creatures, this victory over humanity that's what they want and uh destroy the creation and then the execution of giga's idea 
by the Swissy Klaus Schwab in Davos and their WEF, World Economic Forum. And the Swiss pharmaceutical companies, Roche and Novartis, about which I already made some videos, and the World Health Organization of the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, forcing the people of the world to wear a mask and take Pharaoh's poison. So both the idea of bringing the beast inside and its final execution of the idea are both Swiss, Giga and Swap. You know, it's worse than Smith and Wesson, Giga and Swap. It's more deadly than Smith and Wesson, more deadly than Heckler and Koch or whatever. Here it says the Swissies. Here you got Giga, here you got Swap. And the title of the movie Alien Covenant. And it's probably the name of the entire idea. I mean, I mean, look at it. I mean, this is this is Star Trek. You know, it's right out of a science fiction movie with aliens, and he's showing the covenant here, and it's all over. The Swissies and their alien covenant. There you go. So from the video, the movie Alien Covenant, another badge, building better worlds, and here it says. Wayland Megacorp, mega corporation, a big corporation. Now, what is this Wayland? You know, I I did it here. Swissy Giga, and here he's standing, like he's holding the beast, like he's yeah, like he's being pregnant and holding his stomach, like you know. And it is sort of being pregnant with the beast, or uh, you know, being pregnant with this idea of his, you know, with all the sarcophages here behind it, and they're all popping out here, uh, a whole nest of, of them, you know, of the monsters. So the Wayland, you know, here, W, and here, Ayland. If I put here the S, and here, I-S-S, I get Swissayland. Well, I know it's a bit far-fetched, but that's what they do, these creeps. They do very far-fetched things, you know. And it does fit in a way, doesn't it? Swiss A land. And here it's a sort of ISIS here, ISS, which is also sort of another space, the European space uh, thing, isn't it? Isn't it called ISS? I, I think it is. And you see this, um, you know, Horus and the Horus Matrix. And he's got two horns as well here. And with all this in his stomach, you know, it's all transhumanism. There's nothing human here. I can't, I can't even see what it is, you know? And so Wayland, I, I suppose it means Swaziland, Swaziland, you know? Um, so until we come up with something better, then let's keep it this way, you know? Because it all fits, even if it might look far-fetched. But, you know, when I showed you and I told you that the alien, you know, comes from Swaziland, you probably, in the beginning of this video, you probably must have thought, oh, okay, homie Ross is exaggerating now, you know. But then I gave you the proofs, you know, that this guy is the guy that was pregnant with the uh, the alien video, you know, like here. Or pregnant in his head, you know. And then he puked it out on the world, so to speak. And then from the movie Alien Covenant, at a very, just... A, a fraction of a second, it showed this here, Dr. E. Shaw. E. Shaw. I mean, who's that? You know? And these are the wings of Horus, of the, of the winged sun disk, just as this here. You know, this is Horus himself, and here's the sun. You know? And uh, there's the concept of three in it, one, two, three, and here as well. And these are the inverse pyramids of death, as the poor souls in the concentration camps had on their chests. Uh, it also showed the W, like here, the W for Wayland Corp. And here I wrote it down in another way, you know, saying Swaziland or W A Land, Wayland. 
which is supposedly the uh, the Wayland Megacorp. So Switzerland is the Megacorp. It's a mega corporation. You know, they are ruling the world. It's fair. Or, all the all the NGOs are there. It's a mega corp, yeah. All the all the money, all the banks are there. It's a mega corporation, yeah. Even ruling over America, they got all key positions, like in Swiss Consen, uh, everywhere, you know. The uh, all these American pros presidents, like like uh, Herbert Ho Hoover, a real Hoover, and and the director of the um, of the FBI. Could be his brother, you know, also a Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover. They look exactly the same. Switzerland or Wayland is the mega corp, really. You know, where Klaus Schwab is from, you know, where, where the biggest pharmaceutical companies, uh, Roche and Novartis. Uh, and then this guy, uh, Giga, you know, and, and uh, who, who was pregnant with the alien idea, you know, uh, literally, I'd say, yeah. And also uh, Alistair Crowley meeting that Swissy girl like uh, Leia Hirsig. It all boils down to Switzerland. And here it says, so it really, it isn't far-fetched that Wayland is probably Switzerland because Switzerland is the mega corp out of which the whole world is being ruled. Everything is there. The Red Cross, the United Nations, everything. And, 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 and there never is any war, nothing, no terrorist attacks. They even finance the Hamas and everything. They're behind everything, you know. It's it's the Wayland Megacorp, the Switzerland Megacorp of Horus and the Sisters of Isis, Les Sœurs d'Isis, Suis, Sœurs Isis. Now, I've told you all this, right? And here it is, the Wayland Megacorp. So this image here, which I've shown you in the beginning of the video, it is real. Switzerland, and here the alien, alien covenant. I've proven it to you. Klaus Schwab, uh, Giga, etc., etc. This is real information. It's solid. And this image is also real. Alien here with these creatures here. And here, Switzerland with a lot of blood. And, you know, it's real, people. All the proofs are in this video, all the facts are in this video, all the pictures and the images are in this video, the whole history is in this video and my other videos. Um, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. And also this image here is real, it's a reality. Switzerland is the beast with the seven heads and this is probably what their heads look like. They also have the seven hills, you know, in the uh, Die Sieben Kurfürsten. Watch my video, uh, horror, Helvetic Horror Heidi, maybe on my other channel. I, I get, I've, be, I've been giving you all the proofs, people. And they've got seven heads of state, you know, who divide ten ministries amongst each other. The beast with the seven heads and the ten horns. And they got the seven hills. It's all there. You can't miss the signs and the symbols. It's all vis vis visual now. It's visible. Even this thing here, left bottom in the image, which word I may not pronounce because of the censorship and the total dictatorship, looks like the Horus Sun Disk. So here's the word I'm not allowed to pronounce, otherwise they will take my video off. So this here, Pharaoh's uh, flu, and here is the sun. You see the name is the same here, this name and this name. And this is the Sun Disk, the winged Sun Disk of Horus which you see in that video, Alien Covenant. And the Alien Covenant, you know, it, it shows the sun disk here yeah, all over in their badges, on their badges, showing, saying the covenant. But it talks about the beast coming inside, and which happened right afterwards. So there is a connection between this tiny little thing here 
and this huge thing here, which all comes together here in this symbol. So it's all the same, you know. So this one, that's why they show the uh, the winged sun disk of Horus, you know, because this here, this tiny thing here, what goes inside of the organism, looks exactly like this one here. Even and even the name is the same. You see what I mean? And this is not a coincidence. No. So all these three things here, what you see in this image, here's one screenshot, another one, another one, and another one. They're all interconnected, both in the virtual world, in the video, as in 3D in the real world. So this is this tiny pharaonic flu. Here is the sun with the same name, these and these. I cannot, I cannot pronounce it. And this is the covenant, which is uh, Horus, the bed and the badge. And then there is this video, the alien covenant. So here are the badges, the little one, the big one, and here is the video. It's all interconnected. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. And it's all connected to ancient Egypt and the uh, the winged sun disk of uh, Horus, which is the um, the common denominator. So the video is connected to Egypt. Of course, the sun, it's a sun disk, is connected to Egypt. And then the monster inside, both in 3D, the real world, and in the video, uh, is connected to ancient Egypt. And also, all of this is, of course, uh, connected, and this is where it all came from, you know. And uh, th their base here, from these ones here from Egypt, it's th it's this is their base. And, you know, somebody made this artwork like on a wall somewhere. Do you think, is really think it's the people doing this? As you know now, this is all connected with the um, the winged sun disk of Horus, because that's what it's showing, Horus. And the circle here, it is the sun disk. That's what the uh, the sort of the holy symbol here. It's the sun, Horus. You know, so you see here the mask and, you know, like a little heart here. And so you think somebody just spontaneously, you know, by miracle made exactly this symbol here with these colors of the pink list killers as well? Or do you think it's one of their artists, like uh, like the Giga guy, you know, who was assigned, you know, and he got paid for it to put this on a wall somewhere, you know, just as all the other secret symbols, they are like uh, transmitting informations like on walls, in videos, uh, in stone and everywhere. Eh? What do you think it will be the answer, the first one or the second one? I tell you what it is. It's not a coincidence. It's one of their one of their artists working for them and belongs to these pharaohs who made this because it's not a coincidence. You know, he made the sun disk here over his head, connected to Pharaoh's uh disease, you know, and also connected with the uh, with Horus with the wings. Well, this is not a coincidence, eh? Hey? And then all of it is a covenant and a conspiracy out of the base of Pharaoh, the beast, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. It's all here it says the covenant. And this is the covenant where the Knights Templars they founded their base. And uh, I just proven it to you how the idea of the uh, of the beast inside in the alien movie it came out out of this base here by Giga, and then the execution by Klaus Schwab of this here it also came out of the base of Pharaoh, and is all connected to the winged sun disk of Horus, which is the covenant. The covenant is the Horus matrix and this is why the base here is never 
in any war, not the first war, not the second world war, never are there any terrorist attacks, not the 30 year war, which was the worst of it all. And then it's all connected. They got their World Health Organization, you know, like sort of what you see here with the Sane symbol over it, you know, they got it in Geneva. You know, everything is there in that country. It's really is the base of it all, the base with the seven heads and the seven hills and um, and the beast. Here you see the beast. You know, it's divided, like what you see in the nice flag and everywhere, you know. But underneath is the beast. You know, if you if you pull this off, you see the beast. That's why Voltaire, you know, the French philosopher, he said in Switzerland, half of the population they live in paradise, this half here, you know, and the other half, they live in hell. Now you see it here, 50-50. And then, after that, Pharaoh's poison afterwards that will eat you up from the inside out, just like Giga's alien monster does. And then, calling it the Great Reset. Re and Set, assembled together from the Pharaonic gods Re and Set, the gods of day and night, Re or Ra, the sun god, and Set, the lord of darkness, Re Set, Reset. Switzerland, the base of Pharaoh, having their fingers on it all over and you all remember the swiss alien money i already showed you 10 years ago in 2013 where swissy shows their reptilian money so here you see it's green reptilian it's 50 swiss francs and here you see the eyes here you see the head here another eye here the the nose and sort of a moustache so it's here on this channel here you see it's 10 years ago on Gatsefrats and here's the title so you type in the title if you want to see that and um, and also their octagon money and other weird alien creatures which you can see here about swissy knows a lot more than they reveal so here to be seen at my channel Gatsefrats. so here you see the long-legged creatures i think this is 100 swiss francs or the now they've got another one this is um here there are eight pillars one two three four five six seven eight octagon with a circle for the concept of uh, of three and i think there are like uh, four feet under it for the concept of four so and this is the same uh, video title 10 years ago on my channel Gatsefrats. I also filmed Swissy's new banknotes full of subliminal messages three years ago in 2021 here on my channel Gure. Swissy even shows on their 10 franc bill from 1981 the Nibiru celestial constellation long before Nibiru even got discovered. So here you can see it. The Swissy already had it on the 10 franc bill and then the Nibiru, it got discovered uh, a couple of years later. Yeah. And here is the, um, the Giga alien guy again with the runic symbols for victory. So the aliens are gonna be victorious over humanity. This is alien here, and this is alien. It's all over. The whole, it's, it's the Swiss beast, the home of the devil, you know.
got no other words. And just look at Swissy's 500 francs bill with a head out of proportion and far too big to be human. You all remember my video about Swissy's brachycephalic heads concentrated in Switzerland, whereas the rest of the Europeans have dolicocephalic skulls. Here's the alien. And look at this this head it's it's way too big it's it's not in proportion to the rest of the body so everything is alien in this in this incredibly creepy country and i live there you know and they terrorize me they're it, it's not human there you know the things they do is not human it's on their bills it's it's on everything they do it's not human at all it's all alien all their money bills it's alien they they make this sort of creatures by giga and then there is the uh, pharaoh's poison and the, the the world health organization and klaus schwab it's it's all alien stuff you know that they they want to destroy humanity you know it's all concentrated in, in the in the alps where the seven hills are the end times hills in my video, the Helvetic Horror Heidi. So here it is um, about this is brachycephalic. So it's really a scientific video I made here with proofs. And this is dolicocephalic. This is the skull form of most Europeans. And this is the skull form as it is concentrated in, um, in Switzerland. Uh, so they are like a completely different species species and they behave like a different species so i made this eight years ago probably nine years ago and on my channel Gatsefrats, here is the uh, title so it was in 2015. oh all right and i got arrested again uh, on july 16 2015 a week later so this video probably really triggered uh, the arrest when my daughter was only three years old, crying her heart out. Uh, my younger son, 12 years old, he was traumatized for years after, and he still is, you know. I really terrorized my children and everything. So this, I uploaded this July 5th, 2015, and on July 16th, i never forget it, they arrested me again. There were police all over. So right after I made this video, so this is an important video for them. They really don't like this. Uh, they recognize the proofs, the scientific proofs that I put out in this video. You know, it's only 15 minutes. And this probably triggered the arrest. And they put me in prison again for another three and a half months, and I lost 30 kilos, more than 30 kilos in three and a half months. And they tortured me then again with uh, oxygen deprivation, the code O2T. So please download this and, um, and save it, you know, because this channel, they're going to take it off. It's not going to take long anymore. They're going to take it off, I told you. And and if you people, if you don't um, cooperate with all this, and um, then um, you know I can't do it all alone. You know, then this information I spend so much time doing this, giving it all to you, as my present to humanity, it will be lost, and then we have nothing. So it's up to you. But yeah, okay, I know, you know, you are consumers, you know, most of you, you're just consumers and um, um, you can't really organize, you know, well, that's humanity. I did what I could, but if you're not going to do anything with it, then it's going to be lost and humanity will be lost anyway. There's something awfully wrong with that country. Even their Templar money is full of aliens and reptilians. This is not a joke, people. This is very serious. 
and I give you all the proofs bringing the invisible to the surface and make it visible for you by taking off the magic veil over the most creepy place on earth, out of where these creatures rule over their human livestock and the entire earth. I know a people who made this covenant with evil for their own personal interests and advantages, thus betraying the rest of Europe and the entire humanity. And I know where this country lies, where the evil pharaohs have their base, where they made the covenant with the Suis Sœur Dizis sisters of Isis, and out of where they rule the entire world, totally enslaving humanity, and through endless horizontal wars killing the fathers, the so-called patriarchy for the devastating Horus Matrix. I know where that country is, with their seven heads of state and seven end-time hills, where all nations traded with her Templar banks. So I'm going to read you here the original Pharaonic text about Horus. And it starts with chapter 12 here. In the 360 year of Ra Heru Kuti, who liveth forever and forever, his majesty was in Takens, and his soldiers were with him. So you, you can read with me here. Eh? The enemy did not conspire out against their lord, and the land is called Uatet unto this day. And Ra set out on an expedition in his boat, and his followers were with him, and he arrived at Utes Heru, which lay to the west of this gnome, and to the east of the canal Pakenu, which is called to this day. And Heru Behutet was in the boat of Ra. And he said unto his father, Ra Heru Kuti, I see that the enemies are conspiring against their lord. Let the fairy serpent gain the mastery over them. Then the majesty of Ra Harmakis said unto thy divine Ka, uh, the soul when you live, O Heru Behutet, O son of Ra, thou exalted one, who didst proceed from me, overthrow thou the enemies who are before thee straightway. And Heru Behutet flew up into the horizon in the form of a great winged disc. There we go, the winged disc. Right? For which reason he is called Great Lord, Great God, Lord of Heaven unto this day. And when he saw the enemies in the heights of heaven, he set out to follow after them in the form of the great winged disc, and he attacked with such terrific force those who opposed him, that they could neither see with their eyes nor hear with their ears and each of them slew his fellow. In a moment of time, there was not a single creature left alive. Then Hero Behutet, shining with very many colors, came in the form of the great winged disc to the boat of Rahar Makis, and Tot said unto Pa, O Lord of the gods, Behutet, hath returned in the form of the great winged disc shining with many colors children. So here there's some things, you know, that couldn't be translated or couldn't be read. Yeah. So I continue reading. You can read with me or you can just lay, lay back and listen. For this reason, he is called Heru Behutet unto this day. And Tot said, The city Teb shall be called the city of Hero Behutet, and thus is it called unto this day. And Ra embraced the 
of Ra and said unto Heru, Behold it, thou didst put grapes into the water, which cometh forth from it, and thy heart rejoiced thereat. And for this reason the water or canal of Heru Behutet is called grape water unto this day. And uh, unto this day. And Heru Behutet said, Advance, O Ra, and look thou upon thine enemies who are lying under thee on this land. Thereupon the majesty of Ra set out on the way. And the goddess Estertet was with him, and he saw the enemies overthrown on the ground, each one of them being fettered. Then said Ra to Hero Behutet, There is sweet life in this place, and for the reason the abode of the palace of Hero Behutet is called Sweet Life unto this day. And Ra said unto Tot, Here was the slaughter of mine enemies, and the place is called Teb. And to this day, and Todd said unto Hero Behutet, Thy art a great protector, Maka. And the boat of Hero Behutet is called Maka, unto this day. Then said Ra unto the gods who were in his following, Behold now, let us sail in our boat upon the water, for our hearts are glad because our enemies have been overthrown on the earth, and the water where the great god sailed is called Pekan Ur until this day. And behold, the enemies of Ra rushed into the water, and they took the forms of crocodiles and hippopotami. But nevertheless, Ra Herokuti sailed over the waters in his boat. And when the crocodiles and the hippopotami had come nigh unto him, they opened wide their jaws in order to destroy Ra Herokuti. And when Hero Behutet arrived and his followers who were behind him in the forms of workers in metal, each having in his hands an iron spear and a chain, according to his name, they smote the crocodiles in the hippopotami, and there were brought in their straight away 651 crocodiles which had been slain before the city of Etfu. Then spake Rahar Makis unto Hero Behutet, My name shall be here in the land of the south. You see, the land of the south, that is the, the Perhet, the, uh, uh, which is Upper Egypt in the south, which means the White House, which is a house of victory or strength. And the house of Hero Behutet is called Necked Head unto this day. So here to the red, it says, Pharaoh was identified with Horus since the beginning of history. And Hero Kuti, Harmakes Horakti, Horus of the horizon, the morning sun. Ra Hero Kuti, Re Horakti, the combination of Re and Horakti, which was the main god of Heliopolis in historic times. Takens. It's Nubia, and Uatet also Wa, Wawat is Lower Nubia, Utes Hero is Etfu, and Hero Behutet is the house of Etfu, became to be identified with Re Horakti. And here you can see the winged disc. You know, only a pair of falcon wings were a symbol for the heaven. You know, what the Nazis have, what the Jaywalkers have, and in the film, the alien covenant, you know, it's, um, they're falcon wings. Under the fifth dynasty, a sun disc was inserted between the wings called Beheti. He or the colorful feathers and the symbol was identified with Horus. And here again, here are the two snakes. Just like in the Jay Walker army badge where they have a snake and it's the same thing, you know, the 101. And two um, Urai surrounding the disc were added during the late Old Kingdom. You know, the snakes, the uh, Urai, the cobra snakes. And here's Astertet. The workers in metal, makers and users of metal as opposed to the stone weapons. And yeah. Here's Horus having in his hand an iron spear and a chain. In Egypt, the oldest 
iron till they stood a new kingdom, but the use of iron became common only a few cent centuries uh, later. So, okay, so after the land of the south, we're here, chapter 14. Uh, I'm getting a dry throat. Maybe I need a beer or two. <laughs> no, I won't do it. Okay, chapter 14. Then the God Tot spake after he had looked upon the enemies lying upon the ground, saying, Let your hearts rejoice, O ye gods of heaven. Let your hearts rejoice, O ye gods who are in the earth. Horus, the youthful one, cometh in peace, and he hath made manifest his journey deeds of very great might, which he hath performed according to the book of slaying the Hippopotamus. And from the day figures Hero Behuted in metal have existed. Then Hero Behuted took upon himself the form of the winged disc. There we have it again, eh? And he placed himself upon the front of the boat of Ra. And he placed by his side the goddess Nekebet and the goddess Uachet in the form of two serpents, right? That they might make the enemies to quake in all their limbs. When they were in the forms of crocodile and hippopotami in every place wherein became in the land of the south and in the land of the north. So the land of the north is the Pertasser, which is the red house of Pharaoh. And you see, already here, you know, they, um, they differentiate between the two lands. And it's uh, the old world's order in the north, which is the, um, the land of the north, and the, uh, the new world's order in the south, which I already explained to you in my, uh, in my videos. So we're here. Then those enemies rose up. You see, they got an internal war, you know. And those enemies rose up to make their escape from before him, and their face was towards the land of the south, the White House, the Pertasser. And their hearts were stricken down through fear of him. And Hero Behuted was at the back or side of them in the boat of Ra. And there were in his hands a metal lance and a metal chain. And the metal workers who were with their Lord were equipped for fighting with lances and chains. And with blows that kill and tot set to Ra, that place is called the city Chechmet until this, until this day. And Hero Behuted made a great overthrow among them, and Ra said, Stand still, O Hero Behuted, and that place is called Het Ra to this day. And the God who dwelleth therein is Hero Behuted Ra Imzu or Min. Then those enemies rose up to make their escape from before him, and the face of the God was towards the land of the north, and their hearts were stricken through fear of him. And Hero Behuted was at the back or side of them in the boat of Ra, and those who were the metal workers which they had with them. And he passed the whole day before he saw them to the northeast of the known of Tentyra. Then Ra said unto Tod, The enemies are resting, their lord. And the majesty of Ra Harmaki said to Hero Behuted, Thou art my exalted son, who didst proceed from not. The courage of the enemies hath failed in a moment, and Hero Behuted made great slaughter among them, and Tot said, The winged disc shall be called in the name of this At, and is called Hero Behuted, its mistress. His name is to the south in the name of this god, and the Akacha and the Sycamore. You know, that's why the Akacha is the holy tree for the Freemasons. Eh? They talk about the Akacha. Uh, the Akatsu shall be trees of the sanctuary, you know, and this is why. Then the enemies turned aside to flee from before him, and the faces were towards the north, and they went to the swamps of Watch Ur, and courage failed through fear of him, and Hero Behuted was at the back or side of them in the boat of Ra, and the metal spear was in his bands, and those who were in his following were equipped with the weapons for battle of the metal workers. And the gods spent four days and four nights in the water in pursuit of him. But he didn't see one of the enemies who fled from before him in the water in the forms of crocodiles and hippopotami. At length he found and saw them, and Ra said unto them, 
Horus of heaven, a winged disc. You see, Horus is the the, uh, the winged sun disc. You know, so the guy with the, uh, the the same thing or the sun around his head is Horus. Yeah, all religion comes out of Pharaoh, out of Egypt. Thou great God and Lord of heaven, seize thou them. And he hurled his lance after them, and he slew them, and worked a great overthrow of them. And he brought 142 enemies to the forepart of the boat of Ra. And with him was a male hippopotamus, which had been among those enemies, and he hacked them in pieces with his knife. And he gave their entrails to those who were in his following, and he gave their carcasses to the, their carcasses to the gods and goddesses who were in the boat of Ra, in the river bank of the city of Heaven. Then Ra said unto Tot, See what mighty things Hero Behutet hath performed in his deeds against the enemies. Verily he he bath smitten them, smitten them. And of the male hippopotamus he hath opened the mouth, and he hath speared it, and he hath mounted upon its back. Then Ra said Tot to Ra, Horus shall be called the winged disc, great god, smiter of the enemies in the town of heaven. Uh, from this day forward, and he shall be called he who standeth on the back and prophet of this God from this day forward. These are the things which happened in the lands of the city of heaven in a region which measured 342 measures uh, on the south and on the north and on the west and on the east. 342. So you see, it says everywhere that Horus shall be called the winged disc, the winged sun disc, and the great great god. And this is why the Nazis, they took it, and the um, the J.J. Bays with the J. Walker, they think they finally got their own country, but they got betrayed, you know, by, by the pharaohs who were ruling over them on October the 7th, 2023, when they got slaughtered. Nobody was there to protect them, and they were all hoping for that. Yeah, it's all the same. So here it says in Egypt, the oldest uh, slaying the hippopotamus since the old kingdom, a feast was held in Lower Egypt during which the pharaoh killed a white hippo. Uh, Nekebet, Nekbet, goddess of Upper Egypt in the south, the White House, often shown in the shape of a vulture. Wajet, the, the Wajet, the goddess of Lower Egypt, you know, the two crowns, one is the Wajet and the Nekbet. The two serpents on the pharaonic crown, they symbolized the lands of Egypt. So this is what we see, the two serpents uh, on, the, um, on the winged uh, sun disk. So the Wajet on the left, this one here, the Wajet, and the Nekbet on the, on the right. And this is Upper Egypt, if I remember right, and this is Lower Egypt. This is the White House, the New World's Order, and this is the um, the Red House, the Old World's Order. And they put them all together, and then they had peace. You know. uh, Dendera, Tantira, not in the Hel Heliopolitan tradition, the goddess of heaven, mothers of the sun, and the stars about which is said they enter her mouth and re-emerge from her womb. Well, didn't we see that in the alien movie, right? The beast coming into the mouth and the nose and whatever, and they come out of the womb or out of the stomach. It's all pharaonic, people. She received the epithet, epithet so devouring her uh, piglets. The Akatsha swamps of Watsur, the northern part of the Nile Delta. And he hacked them into pieces with his knife. Mutilation of fallen enemies, you know, just like the Philistines they do, like in, in the JJ base, was a common practice among the Egyptians. The Nama palette for decapitation, Karnak reliefs, cutting of hands and genitals. Well, we saw that on October 7th, hey? The Philistines were doing that. And maybe it was not the Philistine people at all, but, I mean, there's also the Arab nobility. 
and uh, they are pure pharaohs and they probably did that so there will be a war between the philistines and the jaywalkers i mean it was all a setup you see it's, it's typically a pharaonic tradition to cut off the hands and the genitals and this is what the hamas did they male hippos were and and the hamas they even well, they, they even treat their own people very badly. So here you've got the horrors of Edfu. The, the, the whole text, what I'm reading to you, is called the horrors of Edfu. And Horus the falcon, he's having the two crowns here. Slaying his enemies. So here, chapter 15. Then the enemies rose up before him by the lake of the north, and their faces were set towards Wachur, which they desired to reach by sailing. By the gods smote their hearts, and they turned and fled in the water. And they directed their course to the water of the gnome of Mertet Ament, and they gathered himself to it together in the water of Mertet in order to join themselves with the enemies who serve. Set and who are in this region, and Hero Behutet followed them, being equipped with all his weapons of war to fight against them. And Hero Behutet made a journey in the boat of Ra, together with the great God who was in his boat, with those who were his followers, and he pursued them on the lake of the north twice, and passed one day and one night sailing down the river in pursuit of them before he perceived and overtook them. For he knew not the place where they were. Then he arrived at the city of Per Rehu. Remember Per, it means the house. The house of Rehu. Uh, so that's a, a, a nobility house, a royal house, an aristocratic house. It's not a real house to live in. And the majesty of Ra said unto Hero Behutet, What hath happened to the enemies? They have gathered together themselves in the water to the west of the gnome of Mertet. And Mer, it means the pyramid. In order to unite themselves with the enemies who serve Set and who are in this region at the place where are, are our staff and scepter. You know, this is the battle between Set and Horus, uh, where he lost one eye. And again here, um, Yeah, here it says Horus uh, is a pharaoh was identified with uh, Horus since the beginning. And Hero Behutet, which is all the time he's fighting set, is the Horus of Atfu, came to be identified with Rehorakti. And this is his symbol, the winged sun disk. First without the snakes and later on with the snakes. And again, the same snakes as on the um, the army thing of the jaywalkers, yeah. Uh, where was I? And um, hmm. and Tot said unto Ra, "Wast in the gnome of Mertet is called Waset, because of this unto this day and the lake which is in it, it is called Tempt." Then Hero Behutet spake in the presence of his father Ra, saying, I beseech thee to set thy boat against them, so that I may be able to perform against them that which Ra willeth, and this was done. So, you know, you see, Hero Behutet, Horus, Heru, Horus, yeah, and he's talking to his father, you know, didn't Jesus do this all the time, talking to about his father, talking to his father? And having the sun and all the paintings around his head, you know. Then he made an attack upon them and on the lake, which was at the west, the west of this district. And he perceived them on the bank of the city, which belongeth to the lake of Mertet, where the pyramid is. Eh? Then Hero Behut had made an expedition against them, and his followers were with him, and they were provided with weapons of all kinds for battle, and he wrought a great overthrow among them, and he brought in 381 enemies, and he slaughtered them in the forepart of the boat of Ra, and he gave one of them to each of those who were in his train, 
Then Set rose up and came forth and raged loudly with words of cursing and abuse because of the things which Hero Behutet had done in respect of the slaughter of the enemies. And Ra said unto Tot, This friend Nehaha Ra uttereth words of the t- at the top of his voice because of the things which Hero Behutet had done unto him. And Tot said unto Ra, Cries of this kind shall be called Nehahara unto this day. And Hero Behute did battle with the enemy for a period of time, and he hurled his iron lance at them, and he threw him down on the ground in this region which is called pa unto this day. And Hero Behute came and brought the enemy with him, and his spear was in his neck, and his chain was round in his hands and arms, and the weapon of Horus had fallen on his mouth and had closed it. And he went with him before his father, Ra, who said, O Horus, thou winged disc. Huh? Horus is the winged disc, yeah? Nazis in the, in the, the Jay Walker army thing and, and, and the alien covenant. It's, it's everywhere. Twice great Urui Tenten is the deed of valor which thou hast done. And thou hast cleansed the district. And Ra said unto Tod, The palace of Hero Behutet shall be called Lord of the district which is cleansed before because of this. And thus is it called unto this day. And the name of the priest thereof is called Urtenten unto this day. And Ra said unto Tod, Let the enemies and set be given over to Isis and her son Horus. And let them work all their heart's desires upon them. And she and her son Horus, eh? Horus is the son of Set of Isis, set themselves in position with the spears in him at the time when there was storm or disaster in the district, and the lake of the god was called She and Ha Ha. From that day to this, then Horus, the son of Isis, cut off the head of the enemy, Set, yeah, and the heads of his of his fans in the presence of Father Ra and of the great company of the gods, and he dragged them by his feet through his district with his spear driven through his head head and back. And Ra said unto Tot, Let the son of Osiris drag the being of disaster through his territory. And Tot said, It shall be called Ate. And this hath been the name of the region from that day to this. And Isis, the divine lady, spake before Ra, Let the exalted winged disc become the amulet of my son Horus, who hath cut off the head of the enemy and the heads of his friends. And it says here to the right, uh, the festival of sailing. There were a number of sailing festivals. One was this, the sailing of Hathor, celebrating the marriage of Hathor and Horus of Edfu. The hissing serpent set both protected the sun god from the serpent Apophis on his nightly journeys through the underworld and himself endangered him in the shape of a serpent. He was at times identified with Apophis himself. Hem- Hemet, the place of the roar set, was also associated with thunder. So you see, it's an internal fight within Pharaoh. You know, what I've been talking about, you know between the republicans and the um and the royalists which is going on for a long time and this is why uh, some of them they have the uh the winged sun disc of horus and the other ones they have another symbol you know thus hero behooted and horus the son of isis slaughtered that evil enemy and his fans in the inner foes and came forth with them to the water on the west side of this district, and Hero Behutet was in the form of a man of mighty strength, and he had the face of a hawk. There we go. It's a hawk, Horus the hawk. And his head was crowned with the white crown and the red crown, you know, the Perhet and the Pertasser, the white house and the red house. They put them all together because the battle was won and they could make one kingdom with the two crowns and with two plumes and two ureae. The ure, ureus snakes are the cobra snakes. 
and he had the back of a hawk, and his spear and his chain were in his hands, and Horus the son of Isaac transformed himself into a similar shape, even as Hero Behutet had done before him. And they slew the enemies all together on the west of Per Rehu, on the edge of the stream. And this god hath sailed over the water, wherein the enemies had banded themselves together against him from that day to this. So you see, the battle is still going on. Two world wars. Now these things took place, two world wars and the same symbols. Now these things took place on, on the seventh day of the first month of the season, Pert. And Todd said, this region's, region shall be called at Shatet, and this hath been the name of the region from that day unto this. And the lake which is close by it hath been called Tent from that day to this. And the seventh day of the first month of the season, Pert, had been called the festival of sailing from that, that day to this. Then Seth took upon himself the form of a hissing serpent. Now it's getting very biblical. Seth, you know, the lord of the underworld is being a snake, you know, and talking to Eve, you know, and you know, let's take a bite of the apple. And he entered into the earth in this district without being seen, and Ra said, Set hath taken upon himself the form of a hissing serpent. Let Horus, the son of Isis, in the form of a hawk, headed staff, set himself over the place where he is, so that the serpent may never more appear. And Tot said, Let this district be called Hemhemet by name, and thus hath it been called from that day to this. And Horus, the son of Isis, in the form of a hawk, Headed staff took up this his abode there with his mother Isis. In this manner did these things happen. Then the boat of Ra arrived at the town of Het Aha. Its forepart was made of palm wood, and the hind part was made of acacia wood. Thus the palm tree and the acacia tree have been sacred trees from that day to this. Freemasons, they do a lot with acacia. Then Hero Behutet embarked in the boat of Ra. After he had made an end of fighting and sailed, and Ra said unto Tot, Let this boat be called. And thus hath it been called from that day to this. And these things have been done in commemoration in this place from that day to this. And Ra said unto Hero Behutet, Behold the fighting of the smite Fend, and his twofold strength, and the smy Fen set, and upon the water of the north, and they will sail down stream upon. And Hero Behutet said, Whatsoever thou commandest shall take place, O Ra, Lord of the gods, grant thou, however, that this thy boat may pursue them into every place with whosoever they shall go, and I will do them whatsoever pleaseth Ra. And everything was done according to what he had said. Then this boat of Ra was brought by the winged sun disk upon the waters of the lake of Meh. Meh is also a pyramid. As Mer. And Hero Behutte took in his hands his weapons, his dart, and his harpoon, and all the chains which he required for the fight. And Hero Behutte looked and saw one of these Sebau fans and there on the spot, and he was by himself, and he threw one metal dart and brought or dragged them along straightway and he slaughtered them in the presence of Ra and he made an end of them and there were no more of his fans of Set in this place at that moment. Um, yeah, the Ast Abhero is the place of desire of Horus. Aket Shait, oh that's funny, season of Inundation from mid July to mid November of the Nile, yeah. Peret, it's per et, per is the house. Season of growth from mid November to mid March. Anrut, a place where nothing grows, myth mythological near Heracleopolis. Kenan has been translated as Jasper, Astnefer, beautiful place, Shoinoi. Uh, which is an Egyptian message is equal to 60 stadia, according to Herodot, uh, Herodotus. Yeah. And Tot said, this place shall be called Ast Ab uh, Hero, because Hero Behutet brought his desire upon them. 
for instance, the enemy. And he passed six days and six nights coming into port on the waters thereof and did not see one of them. And he saw them fall down in the watery depths and he made ready the place of Ast Abheru there. It was situated on the bank of the water and the face, for instance, direction there was full front towards the south. And all the rites and ceremonies of Heru Behutet were performed on the first day of the first month of the season Akhet, and on the first day of the first month of the season Pert, and on the 21st and 24th days on the, of the second month of the season Pert. These are the festivals in the towns or town of Astab by the side of the south in Anrut F. And he came into port and went against them, keeping watch as for a king over the great god Anrod F in this place in order to drive away the enemy and his Smayu fans at his coming by night from the region of Mertet from, uh, to the west of this place. And Hero Behutet was in the form of a man who possessed great strength with the face of a hawk as he was cro crowned with the white crown of upper. Egypt, the bear head, and the red crown, you know, of the uh, of uh, lower Egypt of the Pertasser and the two plumes on the uh, Ureret crown, and there were the two Ure Ureus snakes, cobra snakes, upon his head. His hand grasped firmly his harpoon to slay the hippopotamus, which was as hard as the cannon stone in its mountain bed. And Ra said unto Tot, Indeed, Hero Behutet is like a master fighter in the slaughter of his enemies. And Tot said unto Ra, He shall be called Nep Ahau, the master fighter. And for this reason he had been thus called by the priest of this god unto this day. And Isis made incantations of every kind in order to drive away the fend of Ra. The Fen Ra from Anrut F and from the great God in this place. And Tot said unto Ra, The priestess of this God shall be called by the name of Nept Heka for this reason. And Tot said unto Ra, Beautiful, beautiful is this place wherein thou hast taken up thy seat, keeping watches for a king over the great God who is in Anrut F in peace. And Tot said, This great house. The great house, it's the Per-A, where the word Pharaoh is from. So the great house, it means Pharaoh, the house of um, the, 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 the big house, which is a royal house. And they're all over the world, this royal house. You know? So you see, the great house in this place shall therefore be called Astnefert from this day. And Astnefert, it means a beautiful place. You know? It is situated to the southwest of the city Nart and covered a space of four Shoinoi. And Ra Hero Behutet said unto Tot, uh, Hast thou not searched through this water for the enemy? And Tot said, The water of the God house in this place shall be called by the name of He. And Ra said, Thy ship, O Hero Behutet, is great upon Antmer. And Tot said, The name of thy ship shall be called Ur. And this stream shall be called Antmer. As concerning the place Abat is situated to the shore of the water. As Nefert is the name of the great house. Neb Aha is the name of the priest, is the name of the priestess. He is the name of the lake, is the name of the water. Ein Hernet is the name of the holy acacia tree. Neterhet is the name of the domain of the god. Uru is the name of the sacred boat. The gods therein are Heru Behutet, the smiter of the lands, Horus, the son of Isis, and Osiris. His blacksmiths are to him, and those who are in his following are to him in his territory. With his metal lance, with his maze, with his dagger, and with all his chains or fetters, which are in the city of Heru Behutet. And when he had, had reached the land of the north, with his followers, he found the enemy. Now, as for the blacksmiths who were over the middle regions, they made a great slaughter of the enemy, and there were brought back 106 of them. Now, as for the blacksmiths of the west, they brought back 106 of the enemy. Now, as for the blacksmiths of the east, 
among whom was Hero Behut, he slew them. For instance, the enemy in the presence of Ra in the middle domains, and Ra said unto Tod, My heart is satisfied with the work of these blacksmiths, O Hero Behut, who are in his bodyguard. They shall dwell in four sanctuaries. You know, this is this is like Switzerland, you know, going to the west, where they speak French, to the north, they speak German, to the south, Italian, and to the east. Four languages, you know, four directions. This is what they're talking about. And libations and purifications and offerings shall be made to their images, and they shall be appointed for them. Priests who shall minister by the month, and priests who shall minister by the hour in all their godhouses whatsoever as their reward, because they have slain the enemies of the god. And Todd said, the middle domain shall be called after the names of these blacksmiths from this day onwards. And the god who dwelleth among them, Hero Behut, it shall be called the Lord of Messent from this day onwards, and the domain shall be called Messent of the West from this day onwards. Their stream shall be called the name of Asti, their, their great house shall be called Abet, the priest shall be called Ken-Aha, and their domain shall be called Kaomesent from this day onwards. So this is this is a original pharaonic text. If you don't understand this, you will never understand um, history and the world wars and what's going on. You will never understand Switzerland, etc. Because these are the ones who are ruling over us and their symbols are all over, even in the videos like... Uh, you know, so here, Horus of Behutet in the shape of a lion. You know, this is the nobility, they're having the lion, you know. And also the, uh, like the King of David, you know, the Bible and for the jaywalkers and whatever, the lion, you know. Uh, see the country of Stosti, Lower Nubia, the land of the lily, you know, Lower Egypt, the uh, Fleur de Lis, you know. Land of the papyrus is Upper Egypt. And Lower Egypt, that's the Old World Order. That's why the uh, Fleur de Lis. You know. in, in the north, the Red House of Egypt, that's the Old World Order, the vertical rule. See, it all fits. And Ra said, so I'm reading chapter 18, and Ra said unto Hero Behutit, These enemies have sailed up the river to the country of Setet, to the end of the pillar house of Hat. And they have sailed up the river to the east of the country of Chalt or Chart, which is their region of swarms. And Hero Behutet said, Everything which thou hast commanded hath come to pass. Ra, Lord of the gods, thou art the Lord of commands. And they untied the boat of Ra, and they sailed up the river to the east. And he looked upon those enemies, whereof some of them had fallen into the sea or river, and the others had fallen headlong on the mountains. And Hero Behute transformed himself into a lion, which had the face of a man, and which was crowned with the triple crown. His paw was like unto a flint knife, and he went round and round by the side of him, and brought back 142 of the enemy, and he rent them in pieces with his claws. He tore out their tongues and their blood flowed on the ridges of the land in this place. And he made them the property of those who were in his following whilst he was upon the mountains. And Ra said unto Tot, Behold, Heru Behutet is like unto a lion in his lair. He is on the back of the enemy who have given unto him their tongues. And Tot said, This domain shall be called Kent upt, and it shall also be called Chalt or Chart from this day onwards. And the bringing of the tongues from the remote places of Chalt shall be commemorated from this day onwards. And this God shall be called Hero Behutet, Lord of Mesent from this day onwards. And Ra said unto um, and Ra said unto Hero Behutet, Let us sail to the south up to the river and let us smite the enemies who are in the forms of crocodiles and hippopotami in the face of Egypt. And Hero Behutet said, Thy divine car, O Ra, Lord of the gods, let us sail up the river 
against the remainder, one third of the enemies who are in the water. You say they say here, thy divine car. That's what I told you. It means the, the living soul, like in America, in Canada, whatever, you know. And that means their souls are, are living there, you know, the souls of the kings, you know, the Lord of the gods. Then Tot recited the chapters of protecting the boat of Ra and the boats of the blacksmiths, which he used for making tranquil the sea at the moment when a storm was raging on it. And Ra said unto Tot, Have we not journeyed throughout the whole land? Shall we not journey cover the whole sea in like manner? And Tot said, This water shall be called the sea of journeying from this day onward. And they sailed about over the water during the night, and they did not see any of those enemies at all. Then they made a journey forth and arrived in the country of Tasti, Tatsi, Tasti, at the town of Shashertet. And he perceived the most able of the enemies in the country of Wuha. And they were uttering treason against Horus their lord, and Herobehote changed his form into that of the winged disc, and took his place above the bow of the boat of Ra, and he made the goddess Nekebet and the goddess Uachit to be with him in the form of serpents, so they might make the Sebo fans to quake in all their limbs or bodies, their boldness subsided through the fear of him they made no resistance whatsoever and they died straight away then the gods who were in the following of the boat of hero kuti said great great is that which he had done among them by means of the two serpent goddesses for he hath overthrown the enemy by means of their fear of him and ra hero kuti said the great one of the two serpent goddesses of hero behutet shall be called ur Watch ye from this day onwards. So here's chapter 19. I think it's the last one. Yeah, it's the last one. Um, Atar of the north is uh, the northern half of the heaven. Apophis, oh yeah, Punt, Phenet is Punt, a land to the south of Egypt. Uh, I think it's Somalia or over there, you know. And uh, the winged beetle. Oh, yeah. So, the last part, eh? then we have it. And Hero Kuti traveled on his boat and landed at the city of Tes Heru. And Tot said, The being of light who hath come forth from the horizon hath smitten the enemy in the form which he hath made, and he shall be called being of the light. Who hath come forth from the horizon from this day onwards. You know, the, the Horus, the being of light, yeah, the light bearer. Yeah. And Ra Hero Kuti said to Tot, Thou shalt make this winged disc to be in every place wherein I sit for myself or dwell, or and in the seeds of the gods in the south, and in all in all the seeds of the gods in the land of the north, in the country of Horus, that it may drive away the evil ones from their domains. Then Tot made this the image of the winged disc to be in every sanctuary and in every temple. You know, the winged sun disc of Horus. You know, you, that's why, you know, you find it everywhere, all over the world. And I say the Nazis, the Alien Covenant film, the Jaywalkers in their army, and and the 101, it means the uh, the uh, sun hieroglyph, which I filmed everywhere, you know, on fronts of houses. And it means the 101. You know, I've, I've explained that to you in my uh, Room 101 series. And um, so th this is really, this is an original pharaonic text, you know, translated. It's thousands of years old. Before, you know, all the world wars and the Bible and whatever, you know. And this is the light bearer, you know. This is Horus. And, uh, and, and you find these creatures like uh, uh, building new worlds, you know, like on the, uh, the the badges. So there is a war going on, you know, the war of the gods or the war, the invisible war between good and evil, and it's still going on today. And we don't even know what it is about or what it what it is from. This war, it's all from Pharaoh, you know. 
Then Tot made the image of the winged disc to be in every sanctuary, in every temple where they now are, wherein are all the gods and all the goddesses from this day onwards. Now, through the winged disc, which is on the temple buildings of all the gods and all the goddesses of the land of the lily, you know, and the land of the papyrus, become shrines of Hero Behutet. As concerning Hero Behutet, the great god, the lord of heaven, the president of the utter of the south, he it is who is made to be on the right hand. This is Hero Behutet, on whom the goddess Nekebit is placed in the form of a serpent or Uraeus, cobra snake. As concerning Hero Behutet, the great god, the lord of heaven, the lord of Mesent, the president of Atter of the north, he it is who is made to be on the left hand. This Hero Behutet, on whom the goddess Watabit is placed is in the form of a serpent as concerning you see to this god the hero behooted in the is in the form of a serpent you know the devil as concerning hero behooted the great god the lord of heaven the lord of mess and the president of the two ateri of the south and north ra hero kuti set it for instance, the winged disc in this every place to overthrow the enemies in every place wherein they are, and he shall be called president of the two Aterti of the south and north because of this form, this from this day onwards. As for this morning star on the east of heaven, to lightens the two lands with his eyes, he is Horus of Bedet, great lord, Great God, Lord of heaven, who overthrows the enemy in the east in the course of every day. Adoration of this God, utterance, hail to your morning star, hail to your horrors, hail to your horrors of bed, that great God, Lord of heaven, you overthrow Apophis and the enemies uh, on the east of heaven, in heaven, earth, water, and the mountains, and they shall never raise their heads. You overthrow all the enemies of the son of Re in heaven, earth, water, and the mountains. As for on the west of Pfenet, who rises in the evening on the west of heaven, and whose rays pervade the two lands, he is Horus of Bedet. He is called the Lone Star, and men see by his beauty, adoration of his God. Utterance, hail to you, Lone Star, star on the west of Puenet, hail to you, Horus who strides, hail to you, Horus of Bedet, the living and great one who came forth from the nun. You overthrow Apophis and the enemy on the east of heaven, in heaven, earth, water, and the mountains, and they shall never raise themselves. May your face, may your fair face be kindly to the son of Re, Ptolemy, who lives forever, beloved of Ptah. As for the winged beetle, which is on the shrines of all the gods and goddesses of Upper and Lower Egypt, he is Horus of Bedet, great god, lord of heaven, who overthrows Apophis and the enemies and foes and the evil counsel in their ways, the living and the dead, are inscribed with his name as is done for his father, Re Harakta, to his day. The king shall act on the day on which trouble and strife occur. A winged beetle in writing shall be made on his breast where he sees trouble, just as Re Harakta did when he saw the trouble of son of Re, its face being that of a falcon. Horus the falcon, son of Re, lips those of a vulture and its body that of a beetle. Be far from him, O oh, you foes, you evil counsel, you men, God, spirits and dead Apophis, you foe of the son of Re. Ptolemy, who lives forever, beloved of Ta, he is the God's avenger who came forth from Bedet and Horus of Bedet is his name. Be far from him, O you who are in the train of Re, you who are in the train of Shu, you who are in the train of Geb, you who are in the train of Horus, you who are in the train of Set, the son of Ra, Ptolemy, who lives forever, beloved of Ptah, he is the god's avenger who came forth from Bedet, and Horus of Bedet is his name. To be repeated four times, then shall the king himself say, I am the god's avenger who came forth from Bedet. 
and horrors of Bedad is my name to be repeated four times. Let his utterance be recited when trouble occurs, and the king shall not be afraid, but his foes will be slain before him, and his heart will rejoice over them immediately, and each one will slay his fellow immediately, as befell the enemies of Reharakte when horrors of Bedad flew against them as the great winged disc. This image shall be made with the face of the king to this day. And to this day, I say, we see it all over in the videos of 2017, the Nazi era, even in the JJ base. This image here, it says here, of the winged disc shall be made with the face of the king to this day. To this day, I tell you. So the whole you know, info warrior thing, it started with the Zeitgeist movie. You remember? This is where it all started with. And then we got the uh, the nine, um, uh, well, the number, you know, starts with the nine. And it starts with a double one. I can't pronounce it, you know. And, um, well, maybe now it ends, you know, the Zeitgeist movie, it ends with this here, what I just read to you. So if you don't know about ancient Egypt and the Horus winged sun disk, you will never understand this, nor will you understand this, nor will you understand Switzerland, nor will you and so forth, a Swissy.